You are listening to the Mountainside Podcast, and our guest for this episode is UFC lightweight Vince Pichel. We had a great time recording with Vince today. He's an absolute blast to be around. He's got a very interesting background, how he fell into the UFC, and to me is one of the most entertaining fighters to watch in the octagon. We dove all over the place today in conversation. We easily could have gone six hours. Enjoy the episode. All right, let's do this. Okay. <laughs> See, it seems like pretty nice. Yeah, no, it's it's a professional setup. We uh we got have an electrolysis next door. So uh, oh, that's next door to you guys. I saw the sign there, and I was like, damn, I want to get. Yeah. We were getting some like, radiation, like <laughs> it was noise pollution, right? So it'd be like a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what in the fuck? Because this is a new studio. We've only been in this. I don't know how many signatures are up there on the door. Yeah, because it probably interferes with the uh, frequencies of it, huh? Like yeah. the, the you feel like signals. Having your, having your phone too close to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's he kept. I, Bobby kept on moving his phone away, farther away. Like I he thought was, it was he a was phone or something, it. but it ended up being whatever our old recording system. It would pick up whatever laser blasts were going on <laughs> over there. Yeah, it was probably picking up the same. It was probably right. run the same. Uh, was it megahertz or whatever it was yeah. running at? And we record a lot on the weekends or at night. So it was like, I was trying to track it down, dude. I replaced all the fucking cables and just here. go to town, fucking Five your shit up. Professional audio engineer. It was like, fucking, yeah. And it was literally. Yeah, what'd like that guy say? $200 fix, you know? He's like, oh, I don't fucking know. Yeah. So, something. So, yeah, that's one thing we got to get you to do. Remind me before you leave. We're having, we're starting a new tradition oh, sign here. The door. Yeah, sign the door for okay. us. And, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, dude, we're finally <laughs> doing this. I just signed. Uh, I just signed someone else's wall too. Uh, my buddy uh, Chris Gutierrez took me to his barber shop that he goes to, nice. and uh, the dude's a big fan of fighting. Uh, he's got a pretty cool barber shop. Um, geez, I don't remember the name off the top of my head. I'd have to look, but uh, he's got Jeremy's a here to look stuff name. up. So if oh, we, uh, yeah, wouldn't you? Sh- I just follow him on Instagram. So that's how I know. Yeah, that's how I know. I just follow him on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah. Well, if it comes back to you, we'll definitely give him a shout out. So, <laughs> is it in Denver? Or? Yeah, it's actually in Denver. It's in downtown Denver here. Let me look real quick. Yeah. Might we got on. time, man. Yeah, it'll be quick. I'm pretty handy with the technology. This is awesome, though, man. We finally got you in here. Sorry for the fucking back and forth on scheduling. Yeah, and... no worries. My life's hectic, too, man. Yeah, like, I know. Especially right now. Like, I wouldn't even... If I told you all this shit that's going on in my life, I don't know if you even believe me. <laughs> oh, Crisp. Not. It's Crisp Barbershops. That's what it's called. Crisp? Yeah, Crisp okay. Barbershop. Nice. He's now, are they working on your mustache, man? Because that is a nice face yeah, piece, man. He, he told me it would. Uh, this thing right here is just stock, so this is untamed okay. right here. I just, uh, <laughs> when it, yeah, when, <laughs> when it goes in my mouth, I chew it and spit it out. That's how I trim it now. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? I chew I trim it when I, while I eat, kind of. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I, I have a couple. Of, on it. Yeah, I bet. I mean, you're letting people fucking know what's up with that, <laughs> for sure, man. It's, uh, I have a couple friends that grow just fucking awesome mustaches and i would consider yours to be in that category it's like part of the signature you know like yeah it uh, is now huh i feel like i started a little revolution in the gym too because you had a bunch of guys that are mustaches now right, right? yeah we got like rob uh, wilkinson Razor rob who just fought actually in pfl go rob uh he's got a stash now uh my boy Askar had a stash i think he shaved his though uh my boy rafa so we got like five six dudes in the gym ro- rocking stashes now <laughs> oh, this guy nick too nick tarpley one of our other uh teammates he's rocks pretty good stash too <laughs> that's rad yeah my buddy jeremiah blackbeard uh on instagram jeremiah wilbur we've had him on he's a former sf dude just fucking oh, sick savage he's he's an outfitter and a cowboy say, his name sounds familiar i think i've probably followed him or he's a rad stuff. dude you guys would probably get along really well <laughs> and then uh my other buddy eric martinez has had the handlebar forever dude like oh nice yeah he's a uh, southern california kid too and just Good dude. So hopefully going to run into him this month. He's an old rock and roll touring buddy of mine. And oh, nice. Yeah. You're a concert buddy? Yep. <laughs> we used to fucking do all kinds of gigs and shit together back in the day. And Oh, you used to work uh, on him? You were a grip? Yeah. Oh, tight. Yeah, tight. yeah I did uh, rock and roll touring. But yeah, I've done a little grip work. I've worked on a few movies. Oh, sick. Nothing super cool. I did like Pitch Perfect 3 and... God, what else? I worked on <laughs> Fast and Furious. Not 7. the one I was yeah, expecting you to no, just rock dude. off with. No, no, you know, no. You know, I did Pitch Perfect. 
they brought me in to be like a consultant on the staging side. So they wanted the, like the bands or whatever. Oh damn! They were doing to make okay. it look like so. Not we just would, pretty like, face, huh? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't put me on camera. It was just they all were all brains, no no mug, you know. So it's all good. It's all right. We all have uses. We all have our uses. Right. But yeah, those iconic mustaches too like i think one of my favorite films is tombstone so maybe that's why oh yeah um yeah. There that, was a, that was honestly a big in inspiration that. for me i would say uh kurt russell in that um also uh sam elliott yes he his was, his was stash, dirty too yeah. yeah his was like i mean his is unbelievably thick that shit's you can't crazy fuck around with Jeremiah, yeah so. yeah you can't fuck with that one <laughs> jeremiah is on the screen he's he's Oh, there we go. Oh, look fuck, at that bad boy. You can't fuck around with his. God damn, that thing. I wonder how much that weighs. <laughs> <laughs> like, you start weight you class know what for mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck, he's going to have to cut an extra couple pounds from that bad boy. Yeah, yeah. I, I made a funny post about that when I was uh, cutting weight last time. I was like, damn, I'm going to cut a couple pounds of this fucking stash. I'm going to have to trim this thing next time. Yeah. That's a stash right there. That's a man stash right there. Yeah, look he's all thing. man, too. You got to feed that thing separately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we got to get jeremiah back in here too man. he's a fucking good time he's Fuck just, yeah. just fucking savage too great great people oh there's chris katera's right there there's yeah, my boy. Pull up, uh... yeah there's the barbershop i was at he's, so oh, he's got like, a little sweet, skate shop man. in there yeah the dude's fucking cool shit too man like real smart guy um God, i hope... wish i had hair to cut man. <laughs> i just cut my own i got the convertible going so he'll, it's like i mean he'll easy. find something to cut i'm sure right. maybe the beard yeah right. Because I told him about this. He's like, "Oh, let me let me get in. I'll, I'll hook up that stash one on." I was like, "Oh yeah." I was like, "Damn, normally I just let this thing grow wild, but I'll let you." You ever wax you it, it at all? Or you I have put like some wax in, done a little bit, and sometimes yeah. I do. I got like this little. Uh, I got this wax. It's like a cedar uh, smelling oh, wax. Those are nice, I yeah. just love the smell of it. Honestly, that's the only reason why I use it. I'm big on the beard oils, man. Like, it's is it gonna get itchy for you? Is that why? The, the, yeah. I have some beard creams and oils from Everyday Man Jack sent me some shit, and it, it's awesome. It's an all natural. I don't know. This isn't yeah, a like commercial. It works. It works, it works sponsor yeah. by him, but <laughs> fucking works good, dude. It's just nice. got a little like pumper and put a little bit in the morning and. Oh yeah. yeah, helps me. I wish it. I would have like known about that or thought about that when I was growing mine because uh, it was super itchy and, and admittedly at first I probably shouldn't have been near a school when I was growing it because I just grew the stash out. I didn't even like grow a beard and then cut it. Yeah. And so uh, the first time I had it was, uh, geez, I think when I fought Gregor. Yeah, when I fought Greg Gillespie was the first time I rocked the stash. Okay. And it was like, it wasn't, it, it, I couldn't even grow it like this, honestly. It was still like in its baby phases. <laughs> but I remember, uh, damn, I wish I would have had something like that because it was just itchy as shit. I remember it all the time I was like, I'm just going to shave this thing. It's bothering me. I'm just like, oh, it's People right. I thought I had an issue or something. You know what I mean? Probably that's right. kind of skin thing going on. <laughs> you were tweaking out over there right? yeah or something huh i would review it does it ever get in the way of you fighting at all i mean is it no because uh, not really honestly anything? like no I, because it, it dude it honestly perfectly hangs over both my bottom and top lip so yeah. it doesn't really get in my mouth when i'm doing stuff like that just when i'm eating because i'll catch some food on it you know right. what i mean and i'll just jam it in there the flavor saver yeah for <laughs> real and and sometimes too i'll just be like I don't know, the sound. <laughs> See what I had earlier. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, man, I'm stoked that you're in here. Um, yeah, Jordan Kurtzman. I've been in here for a while. Oh yeah, he's a great dude. Yeah, man. shout out to Jordan yeah, for helping out. set this oh, up, and uh, we've had him in several times. And his podcasts go very long, man. That dude can talk. Yeah, I'll tell you what, uh, me and him have gone in some some talking ramp rampages for a couple times and where I'm like, Oh shit, I'm like twenty Four minutes hours. away before I gotta go, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I've done his podcast, we've been outside just chilling, okay. you know what I mean, talking. And then I'm like, damn, it's been you've been a half hour shit, just kept the cameras rolling, dude. I love that dude though. It's <laughs> like entertaining the whole time though. It's yeah, like you no. can't it just snowballs and snowballs <clears throat> and yeah, it's fucking awesome awesome dude yeah i love his uh, attention to detail to everything and how he he's just so involved like he's a 100 percent guy so like when he's in something he's in something you know right. what I, mean? I like that about him i really admire that about him yeah i know that is a hard trait to have too right because yeah I, it's a rare I mean, thing i have, have a tough time with it i'm normally one foot in one foot out kind of sure, type of thing and both, it's man. like <laughs> especially when you become a father i don't know if you have kids but like, i don't have a kids but uh I don't have any kids, but my girlfriend has a little four-year-old. Or she's almost five now that I've been okay. taking care of for the last few years. So I, I know what it's like. <laughs> right. But I don't yeah. personally have any kids myself. Yeah. No. That uh, that puts a damper on some of the hobbies and 
and stuff like that for sure. Because it's like, yeah. well, even that screwed up our recording because I was my son's first football game and I recorded with or set up the recording yeah. to be with you at the same time and I hit you up and I hate rescheduling on people. I was like, dude. and there's no way I'm not gonna be like, like, dude, just go, bro. <laughs> like, don't even, like fuck my interview. Oh, what a piece of shit father I would have yeah. been for not showing up, man. Like. God damn. And he, I would have felt like a piece of shit if I would have showed up here too. And be like, I would have just been talking shit to you the whole time. Right. Like, dude, like, could have been watching the kid play baseball. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's cool. They, uh, it's, like that. it's cool he's playing. He came to me and, you know, he's like, hey, I want to play with something I was never going to push on him. I played all through high school. And yeah, I don't know. That's he, really he cool good. too. He's like, good on you to give him something like that constructive to do because I was one of those kids that didn't have anything like that. And I was, I was a little latchy. Right. You know what I mean? I was a latchy yeah. kid, but I was a street kid. I was in the streets a lot. So me too. I man. wish I'd had something to do. Not in the streets. I was a mountain kid. Like, I grew up right here. Oh, you're up here. Oh, yeah. But fuck, we got into trouble, dude. Yeah. I mean, because <laughs> I didn't grow up with a dad. I mean, luckily I had grandfathers and shit to beat my ass and some yeah, good uncles huh. and stuff that show me the ropes. But yeah, it was. Uh, you up to no good, you know? So I'm yeah. trying to be that for him. And then at points I'm like, fuck, should I be a little harder on him? And I am like when he decided he wanted to get into football, you know, he loved throwing the ball. He loves the game. He loved catching the ball and all that, you know? So we, the first equipment that I think he ever had was he wanted a pair of receiver gloves, right? So then he <laughs> went through the ball and I would make him run routes and Just stuff. Stick to his hands. But then when he decided he wanted to play football, I was like, all right, let's go. So we went down the hill. I bought him all the equipment, like helmet, shoulder pads, everything. Oh, damn. Put it on him. It was a fucking blistering day, like 90 degrees up here. <laughs> blistering, right? Took him out on an AstroTurf field, right, that gets extra hot. And oh, was yeah. like, all right, now catch the football, you know, and you're going to run sprints. And he's yeah. like, wait a minute. <laughs> I had him you doing all kinds of conditioning. Up, yeah, I had him up doing up downs, and I was running the Oklahoma drill with him. You know, so oh, it, it was good God. for me too. So yeah, I probably gave you some me in shape. Probably gave you some horrible memories, but some <laughs> oh, good smiles. Dude. I bet I was trying to run sprints with him and shit. I was like, "Fuck, what am I doing?" I woke up the next morning, my hamstrings all fucking tight and shit. I was like, "Ah." Oh. Oh, you're telling the story. I was like, oh, that's please tell me you just gave him like the rough lesson of sports and what it's all about because oh, yeah. that's what he's going to really, that's, that's going to be a crash course for him right there. <laughs> <laughs> he got it that weekend too. His very first play, he lined up against this kid that was much larger than him, probably had 50 pounds on him. Oh, man. And he got knocked on his ass. I mean, pretty mm -hmm. hard, like right out of the gate. He's playing defensive end. But then after that, he surprised me. He turned it up and they probably he woke didn't him get up a little bit yeah, high. Yeah. He's like, oh, shit, these guys are really playing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He ended up having a sack. Get that one back. Stuff. I was proud of him. Nice. That's cool. Yeah, man. So your background, you mentioned growing up in California? Or yeah, yeah. I grew up in California in L.A. Okay. Um, I I was born in Lancaster, California, which is like the high desert area. I know I, exactly where it's at. Yeah. I grew up in Canoga Park. That's where we did Fast and Furious 7, uh, the yep. racetrack out there. Yeah, I spent yeah. a lot of time out there. <laughs> yep, over <laughs> the AV, over in the AV, baby. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I grew up in Canoga Park. And then when I got like, uh, geez, when was that? I think, well, it was kind of a weird time because when I was in sixth grade is when, uh, they were transitioning sixth grade to junior high instead of elementary school, like it was. And so in the, in the Valley, which is what I called LA was the Valley in the Valley, uh, in my year, my sixth grade went to junior high. So I went to junior high for a year, hated it. Uh, I got picked on a lot. Motherfuckers tried to flush my head in the toilet and shit, right? I was small in high school. I got picked on a lot when I was younger. Uh, I was the poor kid that wore shitty, ripped up clothes, had the fucking mullet, right? So, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm the first generation born out here in my family. So, right, yeah. I was like that to a T, you know? And so uh, I hated it. And then we moved out of there to Simi Valley after the Northridge quake, which was in 94, 96. Damn, do you remember that? Yeah, I, I actually slept through the uh, first one, the initial quake, and I woke up at the end thinking, so <laughs> this is why, too, and I laugh about this, but it's pretty nuts. Uh, I used to have this bunk bed. We lived in this uh, three-bedroom apartment. It was me, me, my mom, my brother, and the three sisters, and we had this three-bedroom apartment. Um, the the shit was shaking. Uh, me and my brother slept in this bunk bed that was made out of wood, and it was so janky and so old and just so shitty that... If he, he was on the top bunk, if he scratched his nuts, that thing would shake like crazy, right? <laughs> and so uh, it's shaking, and I, and I wake up, I'm on the bottom, I'm like, what the fuck is he doing up there? And it's still shaking, and I'm like, what the shit? So I start kicking it, right? And then, you know, I fall back asleep, and then 
it stops and then all of a sudden it starts shaking again and then my mom's like my mom comes running she's like holy shit she's like we get the fuck out of here and she like grabs us yeah. she's like let's go and i remember uh my apartment like i had a the, the front door was right here and like my bedroom was at the end here to the left and then straight down you could see down the kitchen and then uh my kitchen had a wall that shared with my living room and you could run around the living room and the kitchen in a complete circle the walls were open on both ends so there's just a center wall and so when my mom pulled me out of the room to go to the front door and get out i looked and i could see down the kitchen and i could see the whole fucking apartment do this shit and the cabinets were opening and things were just flying out and i was like what the fuck is happening you know i've I've never seen anything like this before in my life. And I was, I was like, what, 11 years old, 10 or 11 years old. And we go outside and I don't know what's going on. Things are shaking. I kind of think it's fun. Right. I'm like, damn, like this kind of, this is cool. You know, and everyone's freaking out. Everyone's outside and we're all like in our designated areas because there's like some kind of plan I had no idea about. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh shit, I guess so apparently this happens, you know? So we're there chilling and then I'm like, damn crazy. So that happened. Our place got yellow tagged, which I don't know if anyone remembers. They were green, yellow, red. Uh, so green was you're cool to live in there. Yellow was uh, you could live in there if you want to, and red was you probably shouldn't live in there. Really? And so ours was yellow tagged. Uh, I remember there was a hole in our apartment where I could just walk through into my neighbor's house and like damn. Buddy, so like it cracked the wall so yeah, much that you could just but just destroyed the drywall and it just came apart. And I could walk through the beams. I was tiny, so I could walk through the beams. And my buddy Jonathan lived right next door, so I would just go to his house. We just chill and play for the next <laughs> few days, you know. But we moved out of there. We moved to Simi Valley, which was like Ventura County. And then from there, I lived on until a year ago. I just moved out here to Denver. Yeah. How do you like it out here? I honestly love it out here. And uh, if I'm honest, Denver or, or Colorado to me is what California used to be okay. before it uh, uh, did what it did. Right. <laughs> before it turned the way it turned, you know? Yeah, I know. It's changed a lot. Like I grew up here and then I'd grown up here. I mean, it was pretty, it wasn't podunk. It was still mountain community. But there's, it's a totally different vibe now. There's yeah. so many people. And uh, a lot of the cultures change too, man. It's a lot more, I don't know, I'm not super into politics or anything, but it's definitely a lot more left than, mm -hmm. than uh, it has been ever. And it's, it seems like every, it slowly is going more and more that way, like more like California yeah. type mentality when it comes to. I honestly Politics. think it's just the major cities because, like, I mean, us as a as a herd, I mean, you know, I mean, we're we're animals too, just like any other species, right? And we could be herded like any other. And I think cities are the easiest part that we get herded. So I think that's why that happens in cities because yeah. outside of cities, you don't really see that too much. And there's a shitload of people here. I I wouldn't be surprised, Jeremy. Maybe this is something you could look up, like the population of Colorado and I don't know. Or let's the majority say like population is ninety two or something. Yeah. No, it's like 7 million people right now or more. Um, but oh, geez, like in like 1992 <laughs> when I was growing I mean, I was in high school then or middle school, junior high. I made that transition from, I think I went to junior high school. So For like, sixth grade? Yeah. And then I played, uh, when I was playing football, I used to have to go over to the high school to practice because I was a freshman, but I was starting because I was always a big kid. Damn. So yeah, I got fucking picked on a lot. Too, too. I got beat. <laughs> oh, up that's by what I was gonna. Seniors. That's what I was gonna say too. Uh, so when I when I moved to see me, I went back to elementary school. Really? So yeah, I was in junior high, like all these classes, right, doing my shit. And then I went back, went to elementary school, and I was like, what the? F this is fucking weird. And yeah. Now I feel weird because I'm now back in elementary school. Now I feel like they they downsized me, right? Like I feel like I got held back or something. <laughs> <laughs> like wait a minute. Yeah, yeah no, back. that is strange. What year were you looking? It's five. Uh, I don't know, point, like nineties. That's or what it is five, right now. Five point six now in twenty twelve. Uh, it was four. Damn. Four, so it's a million people in. Million more woo, woo. In ten years. Is there a bigger graph? Can you go back yeah, to like yeah, the nineties? Because there's got to be. That's insane. I know California went from like gaining like a couple hundred thousand people a year to losing tens of thousands. In three point last, three in point two in nineteen. Dude, I know so many people that have left. Really. So, so it is, it's double. Almost double. Wow. That's wild. Not quite. Yeah. You're, you're, you're half a mil short. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. It was definitely a different place, man. Man, we're like cockroaches. Like... You just can't get rid of us, <laughs> can you? <laughs> well, I mean, even in the 90s, like, I fell in love with California punk rock. I fell in love with punk rock oh, because sure, yeah. we had... In the '90s, LA was not a good spot, right? Like, I yeah, mean, no, it, was it, was, pretty, it was pretty rough. You're right. That was there when was it was all the bad. gang stuff. You had the Rodney King shit going on. Yeah. There was, I mean, there was there was a lot of transitioning. I think between uh, 
the different groups of people who were ending up there and them trying to make their stake in the place, you know? Like, yeah. everyone was kind of like, this is our fucking area. No, that's our area. We're here first. No, well, that's, we're here now, you know, kind of thing. Right. And I, I used to see a lot of fights between, like, gangs and uh, even, like, punkers, too. So, yeah. like, we'd be out somewhere and I would see a group of, like, dudes and Mohawks, like, you know what I mean, with chains and shit fighting sometimes. <laughs> like, it was pretty, it was like, it was like Anchor Man. Like, it was pretty fucking nuts. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's wild. So a lot of those families that could afford to, or it was a lot more affordable here back then, you know, you yeah. could get a fucking really nice house here for well, shit, even under now. a half a million dollars or even under $300,000 would buy you an amazing piece of property. And uh, so a bunch of my friends were from Southern California, like the LA area, and they were all into skating punk rock yeah, music me like too. I, that was my scene i figured out about black flag and then we were trying to skate up here like in the grocery store parking lots getting kicked out of those and like now they have a skate park here but it was just way different you know like yeah actually mountain kids a... trying to be city kids you know yeah huh the the transition of the cultures yeah <laughs> i used but, to love skateboarding man that was like a big thing for me when i was younger that was like that's what kept me away from drugs until i quit skating uh, <laughs> yeah yeah, no, I think it kept me out of some trouble, too. I, I know dirt Street bikes did, for sure, things. too, yeah. Oh, I love me some dirt bikes. I got I was, me a KX250 I was so fortunate. Still. My grandfather bought me a dirt bike. That was one thing that they always made sure I had. Like, I didn't have a whole lot of toys or nice clothes. or They always made sure I had decent shoes. And and if it wasn't for my grandparents, then a dirt bike. And Yeah. I guess the dirt bike got me in some trouble, too, riding where you're not supposed yeah, to. Yeah, they know, can. They can. golf courses or whatever, <laughs> you know, like. No big sure, deal, but it looks so fucking lawns. fun, you know? <laughs> and that was around the time uh, one of the big influences, a bunch <clears throat> of the kids that moved from Southern California were into, like, moto. Metal militia and stuff. stuff. Yeah, the, and all those uh, boys. Flesh Wound Films. I don't know if you're familiar with those. I've actually heard, heard of like, Flesh Wound. Or Crusty Demons of Dirt or something yeah, like Krusty that. Yeah, Crusty Demons were the old videos. Those yeah. were old. Uh, those, those were the, the old. Shit. Like, I think those were, like, pre metal militia. That was big before they actually turned themselves into metal militia and did that little thing with them. Right. That's crazy, man. Uh, you know what's funny is... Uh, so I used to know this guy, uh, Mark Smith, Mark DeBear Smith, and he's actually the one who got me into fighting. And he used to train with those dudes. Uh, he used to train those guys, Deegan oh, and Twitch okay. and all those yep. boys. And so, like, I met them when I was younger through him. And then uh, I actually met Twitch again through Ross Pearson because Ross hangs out with those dudes too. Yeah. And so I met Twitch again through Ross. And Twitch was like, dude, I, I fucking met you before. And I was like, holy shit, you, like, you remember that meeting me when I was like, because I was like tiny, right? I was like, He's actually kid. a really good dude. I've done yeah, a they're bunch really, with him. all really good dudes. One of the first like large production tours that I did was Tony Hawk's Boom Boom Huck Jam. Oh, shit. So I was on tour with a lot of those guys <laughs> like Ronnie Feist and dude, was... uh, Mad Mike Jones and Kerry Hart and uh, Deegan was on it. Um I don't think Twitch was around then. He came a little bit later in it, I think. But then I did all kinds of stuff for like Monster Energy and a bunch of these energy drink companies and they would uh they were always out at those things. So we were hanging out, getting into no Yeah, those cause those boys are no friends. Good, yeah. Those guys are friends like since they were kids, I think too. Yeah. How crazy. No, good people. And then uh my buddy Mickey Diamond was one of like the original crusty dudes you know like oh was, for real yeah he's still a good friend we we keep up pretty regular and <clears throat> yeah i i i love being around that too man that's such a fun sport to be around yeah and, the energy yeah, right the energy yeah. that's involved in it that's what that's like cool. that's why i'm super attractive to uh sports like that like any anything dangerous man like i'm a adrenaline junkie kind of person so like motocross, skydiving, you're right. These guys on mountain, like downhill mountain bike, the rock climbers. Like I love watching and seeing and learning and doing. Like I don't like fucking doing that shit because fuck right. that. That's nuts, right? Like people call me crazy, but nah, those dudes are nuts. But like, like I that love Alex watching Hummel it. or whatever that did that National Geographic. He climbed Yosemite, like free climbed it, no ropes or anything. Oh shit, for real? You Dude. need to watch that. Yeah, that is. There's one on Netflix that I just watched. With, it's about this uh, 20-year-old Canadian kid that actually died mount, uh, mountain climbing, but he was an ice climber, a free free ice climber. He went out there with just pickaxes and shit, and, and this dude, he broke records that are still – he, like, has records of uh, climbing. I think it's that one, Alpinist. It's that one right there, that movie, yeah, Alpinist. <laughs> okay. That movie is – that that documentary is I'll really check fucking that out. good. The ending is not what I thought it was, and I, like, cried a little bit, but – it was a really good documentary about him, and like the story is really like I enjoyed that a lot. <clears throat> I thought this was a really Those good dudes documentary. are wild, man. We've had some professional climbers in, and yeah, these motherfuckers are nuts. Like, look at this shit. What are you you'll think? never, what are you, thinking? Yeah. 
<laughs> you will never fucking see me do this, dude. Like, look at these guys. I'll fight anybody, but I'll never fucking climb a mountain like that. <laughs> Fuck you. Wow. That's insane. <laughs> so there's a lot of it in the Alps? Yeah, look like... at this guy. And that's him too, right? Like, just unsuspecting, dude. He looks like just the dorkiest dude you ever run across in your life. But right. He is just a monster at climbing mountains. Yeah, these free climbers. Look man. at that. Fuck, that's so nuts. I guess you just don't look down, huh? Uh, no, I think <laughs> I think some of these dudes are like on the spectrum a little bit. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, they did a in that um, the deal with Alex Hommel. I think maybe look that up so I can shout that out. Um, I think it was um, like in the, in the what was the, the name most, of it? In the most productive and dangerous way, they're like. Yeah. Yeah. A, no, they a little... did a CAT scan on his brain. And they were like, you do not register fear at all. Yeah. Like, there's no receptors. Like, honestly, like I don't... think uh, I don't. I don't really. <laughs> this might sound weird, but I don't think people who are autistic are really like handicapped or anything like that. I think, no, I think no. they're superhumans. Yes, yeah. I think so too. I think uh, I think something just triggered differently in their brain, and they although they might not be able to articulate, and some things are off. Some things that they do are superhuman, right? And and like that's just a fact. So to yeah. me, that's crazy to me because I feel like that's just maybe that's evolution doing something, right? Maybe right. that's our evolution trying to make a jump. Who knows? You know, what right? I mean? But I don't know. I got all kinds of crazy thoughts about that kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. That's wild, man. That's Fuck, so... Look at that, dude. How high was that son of a bitch? Fuck that. <laughs> I'll do that and jump into a, some water. Yeah, right? you definitely <laughs> need to watch that one. <laughs> I'll jump into water. Jeremy, look up the name of that, uh, the National Geographic one. It's. What the one on uh, Alex Hommel? Yeah. No, you you gotta watch the one from um, uh, Jimmy Chin's uh, Alex Hommel. Uh, what the hell is the name of it? Yeah. Anyways, definitely an interesting dude. Is this guy still alive? Yeah. And like any interviews he's ever been on or anything, he's just like <laughs> super calm. I like love how his brain is one of the Google free searches. solo <laughs> is what it is. Free solo. Yeah, free solo. Okay. Yeah, they did a good job filming that. What is that? Where can I watch that? I think it's on. Is it just any it's, it's Nat Geo on YouTube or something? At, at yeah, point. it's a Nat Geo thing. Yeah, I think so. Or YouTube, Netflix, something like that. I would imagine. It, it's wild. It crushed it. Yeah, this is really interesting, man. Like the like, I don't know. I was actually just reading this story too about this guy. Uh, his name was John Jones, actually, who died in Utah. He was a, a spurlunker, like a little cave dweller, and uh, he went in the Nutty Putty Cave, which is like this crazy cave and uh it's it's a cave it's a cave that i don't even like i look at him like i'm not fucking going in there why would you want to go in there right. you know what i mean but people do this shit and he did it and he uh actually got stuck in there because he made a wrong turn somehow and ended up upside down hanging with one arm in front of him one arm behind him right just stuck and then, just because uh, it was so tight he couldn't yeah and move. he was wedged there and, and if he wasn't wedged he would have fell down who knows how far right because where he was was uncharted and so it, they took 27 hours to pull this guy out. They got a pulley system in there. They had dudes in there with drills, drilling holes, putting pulleys in the walls. They were wow. pulling him out, and they got him out, and, and something happened with the pulleys, and one of the lines snapped, and he fell down back in there. And when he fell back down where he was, he fell back down even worse and was wedged so bad this time that his breathing was not only just restricted, but it was getting cut off, and then he died. Wow. And so now the Nutty Putty Cave in Utah – is uh, sealed off as his grave, and you can't even go in there anymore. It used to be a public. So they can get recover the body. Either. No, yeah, they just wow. they left him in there. That's his grave now. So they just sealed it off, and uh, no more public uh, cave dwellers can go in there anymore and do anything. They used That's to have wild. like, uh, what is the search and rescue people out there all the time for people that got stuck, right? That would just pull them out, and whatnot. But as soon as I that don't that have any happen. desire to do cave. Yeah, and there's explore. photos of like right here. the cave that he was in. Yeah, look at Dude. this cave. Wow. Why would you do that? Look at this fucking cave. Why would you want to go? I in have there? nightmares about shit like that. Yes, right. And and I don't I don't feel like I'm claustrophobic. Like I could be in tight spaces, but if I can't move in a tight space, I freak the fuck out. Right. Like I will, <laughs> I will, I don't know. Do that shit. There's I certain ways that. that I don't want to die, and that is definitely on the top of the but fucking yeah. list. So, okay, dude. so see that in the very center. That's the last photo they have of him right there. With his feet sticking oh, out. Shit. See his feet just above that one. Yeah, that's the last photo they have of him. That's him wedged. Oh Christ. Uh, Isn't that crazy? That. Wow, that's crazy. And some people, I mean, they just dedicate their lives to to odd things yeah. like this. And odds, like, 
obviously he's not. They do it in out there fucking doing amazing, it for right? the money, right? Like yeah. or anything. There's no other that real thrill. drive. It's yeah. better than drugs. That's better yeah. than drugs for some people. You know people. what I was watching exactly. yesterday is that Grizzly Man. Uh, oh, that's another that. that's one. A, yeah. That's like another one. Oh, is that the guy got mauled? Yeah, and he's like yeah. making the video. And his face is like, yeah, hanging, he like, like named the Rubble bears Cop. and shit. And was like, <laughs> thought they were his friends until they ate his ass. Oh yeah, he eventually died, right? Yeah, yeah he eventually got eaten. Yeah, I th- man, I don't know, man. Getting eaten alive by a bear would be just because they eat you alive. I mean, yeah. they would hold you down. Yeah, they don't kill you. They eat you. They eat you as you are. Like if you've ever seen him eat a moose or. They'll bite you in the neck and paralyze you, too, so you can't fucking run. I'd much rather have to deal with a mountain lion because at least they're going to kill you first, you know, hopefully before they eat you. Or or end you in a way that you won't feel anything. (laughs) I don't know. We're so soft as humans, you know, sometimes. We we think we're invincible. (laughs) We're squishy bags of shit. I mean, but we have these, you know, amazing minds that that at least we can outwit some shit because if not, we would be fucked we are so powerful and then you so see fragile. so many stupid people that are in yellowstone this is with the guy their right? phones yeah, out. The yeah or somebody like this that is trying to live with fucking grizzly bears dude like what do you think is gonna happen you it's know? crazy but how many times has he survived before that you know like, right dude the footage you get too comfortable yeah, right. thought he was absolutely invincible. insane yeah, you get too comfortable. There's footage, there you there's go. There's footage a, of it? There's a strong stash right there, dude. Look yeah, that's okay, another good okay. one. Uh, that must be the pilot. <laughs> it is. He looks like he's <laughs> from Chicago, though. <laughs> My fucker's packing. <laughs> <laughs> dude, yeah. he reminds me of like... Uh, he's off his rocker. In, in, yeah, in that sure. picture he's where he's got those glasses on, yeah. he reminds me of Jeff Daniels in Dumb and Dumber for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, right it here, could boys. be. He's fucking swimming with it. With the fucking grizzlies? Oh, and he had a little fox as a f- pet, too, or something, right? <laughs> yeah. Jeff, Jeff Daniels. <laughs> yes. The white Mowgli. Yeah, yeah. There no thanks. No, I don't you know, know. People do some crazy stuff, man, but honestly, like, I'm kind of, like, intrigued by it, too. Like, I, I enjoy that shit as well. There's something about seeing one of those things. If you've ever seen them in the wild, it's un, you know, it's like that pucker factor. Like, yeah, oh it puts shit. you in your spot. Another thing that the only other time that I've really gotten that feeling is being in the Pacific. I used to just stand up paddleboard. I lived in Hermosa Beach for like 20 <laughs> years, and I would stand up paddleboard. And when the gray whales would migrate, we would go out and like, you know, get out yeah, and yeah, kind gather of paddle and next to them. We called it harpooning, but it wasn't really. Yeah, we're you're not, not out there harpooning. Yeah, you're not harpooning them. Yeah, I guess uh, if you look back, I think it's in Hawaiian native culture. That's how surfing was originated is they would go out on these boards. And I could be totally wrong. Oh, and use Jeremy the whale's to, wakes to for They surf. would harpoon off of a board, oh, shit. right? They'd kill a whale. They'd cut all this whale meat off. And when they were coming back into shore, they would ride surf the waves in and were like celebrating. Damn, so, that's like, kind of cool. Tribe, kind of knew like i i don't know if that's factual or not but that's what some old stand-up paddlers have told me when i told them they were old lazy dudes <laughs> and then it, then they got me into it you're you just know? doing this because you're old and lazy yeah yeah and then they got me into it and going out we'd go out at like Heck you know man first, golf. first light and the water's just like glass and seeing one of those things swim underneath you it's bigger than a fucking school bus, dude. dude. It is. They're huge. They could swallow you and not even know they swallowed you. Yeah, it is. It's unnerving, man. Like, you talk about knee knocking, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, there's a video. I don't know if it's a video of a picture, but there's a picture of like a little boat in the ocean. It's, it's not a small boat, it's maybe like a 20, 30 foot boat. And there's a damn whale underneath it. And that boat looks like a little piece of shit. And oh, I, I was looking at it, I was like, that's the reason why we don't go in the ocean. Yeah. That's the reason why we know more about space than we do the ocean, because the thing's like this motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> there was only one time uh, I'm pretty sure I saw a white shark because uh, I'd, I'd seen a lot of dolphins. The dolphins would swim up to you, and sometimes it yeah. was awesome. They would swim, like, upside down underneath you while you were paddling or whatever, right, once you get out there. Super cool. I'd seen baby dolphins with their moms, like, in the harbor and stuff. And Oh, that's cool. Just the marine life is so badass, but... I'm pretty sure I saw a white shark at some point. Either that or it was a dolphin that had a totally fucked up fin. Like a fin <laughs> Because yeah, a lot of the great white. Shark got away. Yeah, but 
God, that is probably my biggest fear is getting eaten by a shark, dude. Like, I don't. There's yeah, a lot of ways shitty. to. Yeah. We were talking about that on the last podcast we just recorded with my buddy Andy. And he's a former SEAL. So they they did all these dive missions and training and shit. And Damn. He like, saw some crazy shit on the water. He's like, yeah, fuck that. <laughs> you know, like, getting eaten by a shark is the worst. Yeah, when it's I found be one of the worst ways to go. When I found New Zealand, uh, I had a buddy Brandon who was like a, a park ranger, and he took me out like venturing off and stuff. And uh, he he drove me by this beach, and I was like, "Oh, it's a pretty good beach. Like, it's a good little run. You know what I mean? I could probably jog that, get some workout in before I, you know, what I mean, because I was training for my fight still." And he's like, "Oh yeah, it's good. Just stay out of the water if you see fishermen." And I'm like, "Why?" And he's like, "Oh, he's like, before you came here, mate, he's like, we had a tragedy." And then he goes, uh, some fishermen were throwing chum in the water, trying to track fish and whatever to go fishing. And uh, <clears throat> there was a swimmerman who who's always over there. He's a, a or a triathlete who's always over there. And what he does is there's a rock way out there, and it was maybe, I think the rock was probably like 100 meters probably. And so this dude would swim around the rock, come back, he would run up and down the beach, and then he'd swim around the rock. And that was like his little thing. Okay. And so I guess before he did, um, he didn't see the fishermen. They're on the back side of that rock with their boats, and they're throwing chum in the water. Dude swimming around, sees the fishermen, and there's a shark in there now because the shark sees the or smells, smells the, blood, the blood, whatever. Or whatever, yeah. So the story in the in the paper, he showed me the paper, is the fishermen were there, and they saw the swimmer, and then the next thing they saw was a shark jump out of the water, grab the fishermen, leap out of the water with the fishermen in his fucking mouth. And they see the oh. fishman looking at the fisherman like, help me, as he's fucking going back in the water in the shark's mouth. No. And I'm like, holy shit, are you serious? He's like, yeah, he's like, stay out of the water. And I'm like, damn, that's fucking nuts. So, yeah, doing... Uh, this is this is that one a couple months water. ago. Oh, is, is it? that oh, a person? Oh, I saw this, yeah, and they were yeah. telling him to get out of the water. Oh, shit, did he live? No. Or she? No. no. Where, where, was this Florida? Was it in Florida? No, no, this is Australia. Uh, it's also always Australia. I'm I'm pretty sure. So I've been to Australia, and we were when we were there, there was a shark attack on the beach. That's where, like, on their reef, oh there's where all God, the dude. craziest, violent, most violent great whites are. Those are the sharks that jump out of the water. Wow. I found that out too because I did some research. Yeah, it's nuts. So I've actually been to South Africa, and uh, it's actually one of my favorite spots to to in the world. You know, is, really? was down. I heard it's really nice. I honestly. actually thought about buying some property down there. For real? Damn. Yeah, it was, I've been to Northern Africa. It wasn't. It's not that. Nice. No, that's a whole <laughs> different story, dude. That's a whole nother ball. That's of a laps. scary area. Yeah. But I went to, uh, I stayed, and I was into surfing and stand-up paddle and stuff, and I stayed an extra week. We had a show down there, like a festival, and it was awesome. And uh, we ended up, I ended up staying an extra week, and I went to all these little surf towns, and one of them was Musenberg. And I, it said, you know, like, if you read the surf report, sometimes they'll have a shark, like, warning or whatever and normally it's kind of like jokingly because surfers really don't care all that much but yeah, it basically anyway. said meat on a stick or like <laughs> shark popsicle or something was like the fucking right so like i guess shark attacks happen all the oh, time well, i was like well i gotta go see this because it's just break after break after break and it goes for like as far as you, you gotta see, see what a shark like a perfect shark waves no i wanted to go check it out so i took this cab ride like fucking i don't know 45 minutes and we went through some like crazy like tribal like villages they weren't tribal villages but just like super third world like type villages yeah, right where area. they were like carrying buckets of water and shit dude and um it was cool i mean the people were all nice and and stuff i was giving out candy and some <laughs> other shit that i brought giving out candy well they the taxi cab driver handed me a bag of candy and it's like a toll to go through some of these spots Oh, really? You yeah. Candy? So, like, the kids run up to the car, and you just kind of, oh, like, you're, like, candy. fucking Santa Claus or something. Right? Oh, shit. Yeah. Otherwise, what happens? The kids throw bottles at you and shit? <laughs> the know, bottle dude, kids? They might fuck you up. You know what I'm saying? Like, shanked. It's a hard life out fuck, there. It's I know. Like, you know, they're Take just trying shoes. to provide food for themselves, I think, and clean water if they even have that. Yeah. You know, like, But anyways, I got to this little German town of Musenberg. It was awesome and uh, beautiful, beautiful little spot. And I look out, and the, there's hundreds of surfers in the water and i was like i cannot have traveled all this way 
and not go rent a surfboard and at least surf like huh. my chances are pretty good right like yeah. I at least like one in a hundred and the day after i left like i surfed all day had a fucking blast the waves were so easy for me to get in and out of and nice it was just incredible surfing and the yeah, day after like somebody got shit. munched dude oh damn yeah wild by a white shark and then we did one of those shark uh tours where they take That's you out on a boat it's fucking nuts down there with the glass bottom no it has they drag a dummy behind it oh really and the sharks <laughs> fucking breach the breach the oh dummy. they jump yeah. out and grab it oh yeah. fuck. we were only does able it, to get does two it jerk sharks on the boat? they weren't very big no but it is frightening because you don't know it's coming it's like a gunshot dude and then it all of a sudden there's a you know i think that we maybe saw like monster. six eight footers but yeah, Jeremy, play one of these videos. How much do sharks weigh? They're like, oh my god, dude! They got a pounds, be... right? They're pretty heavy, huh? Big I wonder, one. Yeah, a maybe... fifteen foot one's got to be a fifteen <laughs> At least a footer. Few pounds. That'll be the next Google. Huh. <laughs> yeah, see this little dummy. Damn, that's not a very big shark either, man. <laughs> this guy looks nervous as fuck. <laughs> yeah, he looks like Troy Aikman's nervous cousin. No, and I think it's the only place in the world where the sharks come completely out of the water. Yeah, it is down there in Australia, New Zealand. That's yeah. that's like where the sharks are crazy because that's where uh, what did I watch? Shark speeds. I watched something about Shark Weeks. Hang I was time. watching a Shark Week on there telling you. So it's like a competition. Dude, female, forty two hundred to five thousand pounds. <sighs> Holy <laughs> shit! God damn, Jump, dude! Jumping ten feet out of the water. That's my fucking GMC. God damn, dude. There's also these fucking... They're so big. There's also these tiny sharks. Talk about a fucking these, predator. They're fucking frightening, dude. They look like an alien. Like a little it's piranha. Called a, yeah, it's called a cookie cutter shark. <laughs> what? And it literally got... It looks like a worm. Yeah, it what looks like a worm, and it bites a perfectly round circle out of you. No way. Yeah, so the, it's, it's a basically a parasite, fish. right? And it lives like super dark deep and it comes out it's nocturnal it comes out at night and it'll kill great whites like it literally just goes through it'll, like a drill no bit. fucking yeah. way yeah look at these things i think that they only actually have <laughs> one actual dude that fucking third picture looks like it's got lipstick on <laughs> on the top <laughs> the <third> the th <laughs> it looks like a dick with lipstick what the fuck teeth, is dude? that dude <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> But well, the fuck got some there's, Botox. There's a couple people that have like those triathlon. Yeah, look at that picture in that dolphin. It cuts a perfectly round circle Holy out of shit. it, right? And sometimes there's multiple ones, so they just Fucking eat leeches. you alive. Yeah, killer whales. They that go is so. Them, that's too. a scary fucking. <laughs> fuck yeah, the dude. ocean, dude. Yeah. Fuck the water. Yeah, you start looking at this. You don't want to fucking go to the beach anymore, or you want to stay on the beach. Do you know I'd be more afraid of if there was like a giant uh, squid or like a kraken or something like that? Oh, like, dude. If something like that Any is that actually shit, real, yeah. like, fuck. Because that really trips me out that we only know like 5% of our oceans or something stupid like that, but we know like, you know, 80 to 90% of- Or like, megalodon, like the yeah. prehistoric shark, the, where they the teeth are like the size of this fucking stein over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Well, we got on a shark tangent. Let's get back. Huh. I want to get back. I got a lot to talk to you about. We're right, fucking burning through the time. <laughs> we're good. I got what, a uh, Yeah, we're talking about savage predators here. Um, what? Speaking of that, what kind of got you into fighting? You mentioned, you know, knowing some trainers and getting beaten up a little bit Jeez. as a kid and picked on and. I don't know. I feel like my story is kind of just like the typical story, right? Like. Uh, like I said, I'm the first generation born out here. My, my parents, my mom, my dad. Um, my dad's side, they're full blood Italian. My mom's side is like Dutch Indonesian. And uh, so I didn't grow up with my dad. My dad was in my life the first few years, you know, left, whatever. I grew up just an angry kid. Um, I was super competitive. I always felt like I was kind of, like I was super poor, so I was never really able to play sports and stuff, which now when I think about it, if we were able to play sports, I don't know if I would have liked it because of the training and shit that's involved, right? Like, to me, it was a fun, it was a game. It was fun. That's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to work, right? Because uh, my life was kind of rough, and I and admittingly, I didn't really get to play a whole lot, right? Like it was kind of just sh shitty, right? And uh, I I uh, got in my first fight when I was younger, and I want to say I was like, jeez, five or seven years old. 
I had just learned how to ride a bike and I didn't have a bike of my own. And so when my friends would have their bikes, I would kind of just jump on their bike, try to ride it and eat shit. Right. Until I figured it out one day. And one day when I figured it out, it was just like that. It just, it just clicked. And when I jumped on this bike and I could ride the bike, I remember I was just fucking hauling ass, right? Even my mom was like, how the fuck do you learn how to ride a bike? I was like, I don't know. I just hit the pedal and just go. I don't give a fuck, right? right. And I ate shit a lot, but I also hauled ass on that thing. But <laughs> anyway, I remember um, I was riding I was riding my friend's bike and my brother was getting picked on by this big ass fat kid. And then I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? And I was like, fuck that shit. So I was like riding over there and I remember I was like pissed off too because I was like fucking picking up my brother. Like I'm the only one who gets to beat up my brother. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and so I'm riding and I just slam into the kid full force with the bicycle and me and like I go flying, right? Like I hit the kid. He he goes flying. I go flying. I get up. He's still on the ground and I hit, I'm hit. i hitting the kid and the kid's crying. And then I get pulled off by my mom's boyfriend, uh, Wayne at the time, who is this like six foot four, like dude with New York accent, super deep voice. I... <laughs> what the fuck are you doing over here? You know what I mean? Like one of those motherfuckers. And so he grabs me, picks me up. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. Throws me on the ground, kicks me, kicks me back inside. It's right? not like, funny, but man, this is, yeah. yeah like this, this is what is, happened, right? This like is a Hollywood story. Yeah. Right so like, I, like I was the asshole in his eyes. Cause he just saw mm -hmm. me picking on the kid, like beating up on the kid. Even the kid was like twice my size. Right. And so we go inside, they're yelling at me and I'm like, he was picking on fucking Tony and my brother. And they explain it, right? Because the kid's parents came over and was talking shit to my parents, like saying, because I, cause I hit him on the bike, right? Because I was just, I full force hit him on the bike and the kid was fucked up. And so uh, they were talking shit. And then I was like, he was picking Antonio. I fucking saw it. I slammed into him. What do you want me to do, right? And my mom's like, that's what happened? I'm like, yeah. And then my mom's like, fuck you. Started cussing them out, right? I was like, oh, fuck shit. you guys. Your son's a fucking piece yeah. of shit, right? So that was like my first fight. And then from then on, I was like, damn, I like that. Like, that was fun. And then when I was in first grade, I got my actual first like fist fight with two kids. And uh, like I said, I got made fun of a lot. And these two kids were new to the school. Uh, I went to a school called Limerick Elementary. And uh, damn, I still remember my teacher. Her name was Miss Kadani, a little Asian lady. <clears throat> and she, she loved me, but she hated me because I used to curse when I was a kid. And I didn't think words like pissed or... Uh, you know, ass. I didn't think those were bad words because they were normal around my environment. You know what I mean? So yeah. I didn't say fuck or shit, but those, the other words I did, you know, say. And so anyway, uh, they were picking on me one day and I just had enough. And I started fighting with the taller kid. There was a taller one. Uh, and then I don't remember his name. And there was a shorter, fatter Mexican kid. His name was Elias. And then I, I tackled the big kid, started punching him. And the kid Elias tackled me and started punching me. And then we both got up, me and him started punching each other until we both kind of just started crying, you know what I mean, as we were punching each other. And then we stopped. I jumped a fence. I jumped like a 10-foot fence and ran home in the valley in L.A., which was like, I don't know, I think I lived like three or four miles to back home, and I think it was the second or third just grade. Just pieced out of school. Yeah, yeah I was I'm like, gone. fuck, I was crying. I was emotional, right? I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I was kind of like lost, and I didn't want to get in trouble. And I was just, I was a little afraid, but at the same time, I was like, fuck you guys. You know what I mean? Cause like, this is where this how only happens. This only happens in this fucking place. So fuck you too. Right. But, uh, I get home, I walk at the door, which my door wasn't locked. I thought that was kind of weird. I remember looking to my right. I remember my kitchen was to the right. My mom was feeding my little sister, Nisha, who was still in the high school at the time. My mom's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And I told her like, oh, I got into a fight at school when I left. And I, my mom, you know, we jumped in her Cadillac. My mom used to have this old 73 Cadillac Eldorado, big really? black boat. Yeah, just a monster, right? Those things a, are awesome. Yeah, man. with a 460 My mom had a Lincoln, it. puke green Lincoln Continental. Uh, right? Dude, no seatbelts. Like I used to have like a toy <laughs> truck and we'd be like running across the back dash, you know? Like, oh, fuck like, yeah. We got in an accident one time, dude. I'm lucky I'm here. Oh, for real? Dude, yeah. we, got, we actually got hit in my mom's Cadillac, too, and it didn't even phase, I think, because it was made out of steel. But yeah. uh, I actually got fucked up, and uh, the doctors said I was going to have scoliosis and not even be able to walk when I was older, but here really? I am. So, yeah, I got because when it happened, I was twisted. I was like this, and I was fucking with my brother, like beating up my brother in the car, and we got rear-ended. And we were stopped at a late, and this, dude was, this lady was doing 60 miles an hour when she hit us. And it didn't Holy really, shit. like, it fucked the car, but it didn't really fuck the car up, you know, because it was steel. And so that those was, old cars, that that. our car was fine too. That Lincoln yeah. Continental, I think it was like a '60s or '70s. It was it, pretty nuts, dude. It yeah, had look at that bad boy. Yeah. But this, it was puke green. But it, I think it was a four door. Look up '72. Actually, maybe it was a '72. Her original was a '72, I think, and because the, the headlights were different. The that front blinkers were like gangster the, car. Dude, yeah, the front is... blinkers were the tall, thin ones on the side. Yeah, they went vertical. Okay, maybe it was a '72. Yeah, right there. Ooh. Boom. 72. It was that one. Dude, my uncle had one of those. 
Uncle Jack. Did he? Yeah. That was that car was fucking badass. I, and to this day, like if I were to get like a nice luxury car, it'd be yeah. that thing. And ours wasn't nice by any means. Like the seats were leather, but they were tore to shit. And the leather fucked you up if you rubbed it right. You right. It would like it would leather cut <laughs> you like cut you, yeah. yeah like paper cut but worse. Yeah. The seatbelts, it was black inside. The outside was black. You touch the seat on a hot day, it'd burn the fuck out of you. Those seatbelts would burn the shit out of you too. Yeah. Leave stain, leave marks on you. I got my door, I got my leg slammed in that door one time. I remember because my sister shut it real hard and I was getting the back. Damn, oh, that is a heavy fuck. door yes. too. Yeah. I, I had never felt pain like that ever in my legs till this day. Yeah, with me, I was so, <laughs> we were going oh, through shit. an intersection on like a 30 mile an hour, 35 mile an hour street. It was dope. And, uh, I actually remember exactly where it was at. It was Bowles and like Kip Bowles and Quincy or something like that. <laughs> oh, out here? Yeah. And we're going through an intersection and this lady ran a red light. And mm. I was playing in the back seat, no car seat, no nothing. And I would I got thrown when we hit that car. It didn't fuck up the car, but it threw me into the windshield. Fuck. And I was like pinned in between the windshield and the, the firefighters like broke the rest of the windshield out to get me holy shit that's pretty uh, crazy yeah and then my back was all cut up and shit you yeah. didn't get fucked up at all from it damn no. made me nine lives i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure it fucked up my brain a little bit you yeah know what I mean? like, <laughs> you seem fine i've never me. been <laughs> the smartest kid you know but i have a good time all uh, right yeah uh, shit i was actually in a pretty bad accident too when i was uh 20 i mean i mean i'm in a lot of accidents i'm pretty lucky to be alive myself but I was in a real bad. I was hit by a drunk driver when we were twenty. When I was twenty years old, uh, I was. It was on Halloween that year. My grandma had died, and her birthday was on Halloween. My Oma, my mom's side, and I was like, I'm just gonna stay home. I don't feel like going out. You know what I mean? I went home. I think I was sleeping. I was like, I was just kind of depressed. She had died a couple months prior, and so uh, I was like, I'm just gonna chill at home, smoke some weed, fucking play some games, just relax. You know, I don't feel like being around people or anything like that. You know. So my girlfriend at the time was like, come on, let's just go out and party. I'd have my friend Curtis, too, who had passed away. Uh, he's like, let's just go fuck a party. I was like, you know what, fuck it, let's go. I, I want to get cheered up anyway, let's go. So we go two miles down the fucking road. Uh, we're in this Toyota pickup truck, uh, single cab pickup, uh, stick shift. My buddy Curtis is driving. My girlfriend Shana's in the middle. I'm on the passenger seat. I'm a seatbelt. No seatbelt in the center. There's not even a seat in the center. Uh, we're driving. Uh, we're going through a light. My buddy Curtis is timing the light. He was a madman driver. Like he drove, like he was racing everywhere. And admittedly, I do that too sometimes, and still to this day. But he he was worse than I was. Like I give people fear boners. This motherfucker like probably gives people heart attacks. <laughs> what did you say, fear boners? Yeah, fear boners, yeah. Like because I, I drive, I drive aggressive. I love like like I said, I'm adrenaline junkie. So some yeah. things I'm aggressive. I'm super aggressive with, right? and I have I push it to the limit. And driving is right. one of those things. And so uh, I see him timing the light, and then. Up ahead, I, I see this guy who's blowing a red light to turn in front of us, right? And so I'm like, shit, don't go. It's already too late. He downshifted. He gassed it. I reached across, grabbed his shirt to stop my girlfriend at the time from flying through the window because she didn't have a seatbelt. Yeah. Uh, when I did that, I couldn't stop and brace myself fully, so I flew and I hit the windshield. I actually hit the top crossbar or whatever. Uh, I think I got knocked out. I don't, I don't really remember too much. I remember waking up, I'm sitting in somebody's car, like a station wagon. I'm sitting like in the back of a station wagon and a cop is flashing his lights in my face, ask me how much I had to drink. And I'm like, it's your fucking light in my face. I just woke up like 20 minutes ago. Right. And then did the car roll or you just, you guys, we got... just hit spun, I guess. I don't know. I don't think we okay. rolled. We just hit and spun. Um, and then black and I wake up in the hospital. My mom's there, my brother's there. And I remember trying to talk to my mom, but I couldn't, I couldn't, it was weird. I felt mm -hmm. fucking trapped in my body where Whoa. I could like, uh, it wasn't like coming out the way that I was meaning for it to come out. And that was mm -hmm. a really fucking scary thing for me. And then uh, I was really fucked up for a while and I would have, uh, I was, I had like a severe uh, concussion and it was the point where any kind of like bump on me or my head, I would, I would be unconscious. I'd fall asleep in somewhere. Really? And uh, my, my uh, motor skills were fucked up too. And I had to actually learn how to walk properly again where I couldn't walk right. I was fucked up for a little bit. And uh, <clears throat> I lost, I want to say, like two years of my life from that accident. I was, I was like 20. I think I was 20 years old. It was before, I was, before I was old enough to drink, I remember. Cause I was Damn, like, dude, that's drink. wild. Yeah, it was pretty nuts. And I had to learn how to walk again. So, like, I was like, holy shit, man. I wish we had a fucking car like that Cadillac when I was driving. Yeah, no <laughs> joke. Those old cars. I mean, now everything's got a crumple factor. I mean, you get in a little <laughs> yeah, fender bender and your car's fucking totaled, right? Yeah, they like, absorb it's it. plastic and... 
there's hardly any metal in them anymore. Which is good, right? I guess good and bad. Yeah. <laughs> It'll absorb yeah, it. absorb yeah, it so much yeah, that it'll pinch you the driver sometimes. You can't now. walk or something, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. Damn, that's wild. So pretty nuts. Oh, yeah, but going were back Were you training f- for fighting at that point or anything? No, or I wasn't. You, and admittingly, when I was younger, I wanted to fight because I'd watch movies like uh, Bloodsport, Rocky, and I was like telling yeah. my mom, like, I want to fight, you know what I mean? I want to do that Damn, shit. Damn, was the want... shit back yeah, then, For dude. real. Like, doing splits on the chairs. Yeah, and when I saw that Steven shit. Steven Seagal, all those <clears> movies, all yeah. that sort of stuff. When I watched Bloodsport, I was so inspired. I was like, I want to win a Kumite. Like, I want to be the guy who's like, fucking fuck everybody fuck what you know i'll beat your ass you know what i mean i gotta beat your <laughs> ass i want to be that guy so it was like from an early age i wanted to do it my mom was always like fuck that i'm not paying for some kids hospital bills when you beat them up you know so i'm like whatever when i finally got old enough i think i was like uh 24 25 i was almost because how old are you now vince because I- i'm 39 now I'm okay 40 in a couple months yeah we're not that far apart i got a few years on you so i'm 43 oh are you nice yeah so yeah, I grew up in that same era and like watching, you know, First Blood and like those were oh, kids yeah, movies, the dude. They were rated R. Yeah, hell yeah, Michael like, Dudikoff movies too, like American yeah. Ninja and shit. Those yeah. like I love those movies, man. Like so influential, man. Like, it really was. And when I watch them now, I'm like, damn, that shit's like stupid as fuck, right? Yeah. When I watch the music <laughs> like is Cobra. Like, yeah, Do you remember Cobra when he was uh, <laughs> marrying well, Cobra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remember the, the guy with Dave. the fucking axes, the serial killer dude? They would like. Oh Kick shit! Them together or whatever. And you know what else I remember too was watching old shit. As I used to watch like uh, Kung Fu Legend Continues. Yeah. With like uh, what's his name, uh, David Carradine, and uh, I used to watch this old show called The Renegade, which was like I don't even remember the guy that used to play the part. I know but what you're talking about. He was on a motorcycle and he would like he was just this kung fu guy. He used to f- go from bars and just fuck people up. Like it was kind of it was. A he was like kind show, of like the. It motorcycle club chuck norris right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. basically yeah, yeah. He just one man army fucking people and shit it's pretty crazy <laughs> i forgot about that but uh yeah so when, when i was uh 25 i got i got into a fight i got into a lot of fights when i was younger and i was at this party and i had a friend josh who was smaller uh he's like you know five four five five you know tiny guy and i was there uh with my girlfriend and my buddy curtis again time we were always like together right at this time of my life and then um, I see Josh and these two guys who are about my size were like talking to him and, and I could tell he was uncomfortable, right? And like, I don't care if I, if I know the person or not, if I see someone who's like at a disadvantage or needs help, I'm gonna try to help that person. And so uh, I walk over there and I'm like, hey, what's up Josh, what's going on? And he's like, oh, just chilling, talking to these boys. I was like, oh, are you okay? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, you don't, like, I feel like you're not okay. Like, if you, you know, if you need me, come, 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 I'll, I'll be right over there, you know? He's okay, and the other guy's like, "Why don't you just?" He's okay, why don't you just mind your business? And I was like, "Well, because that response right there is the reason why I came over here. Because I don't like how my boys, I don't like his body language right now. So what's up? Well, you guys got a problem with my boy? You got a problem with me?" And the guy's like, "Oh well, yeah, maybe we should just kick your ass." And I was like, "Let's go!" Boom! I cracked that dude. Right, that dude's on the ground snoring. I reach over some people to hit his buddy. I hit his buddy. We get broken up. Um, I get kicked out of the party. <clears throat> so. I leave uh, as I'm outside, right? There's commotion, whatever. As I'm going to leave, there's cops ready out there. The cops are talking to me, asking me what's going on. I explain to them the whole thing. Josh, everyone collaborates my story, right? I'm like, yeah, I fought. I fucking hit this dude. I hit this dude, but they had it coming. You know what I mean? And so uh, then later on, I think it was like Thanksgiving or Christmas or something, I'm with my girlfriend and I'm at her dad's house or her, her dad's, her uncle's house. And her dad's there and her dad's friends with this dude, Mark Smith, who was the guy I was telling you about earlier, who he's okay. training with militia guys. And so Mark is a hometown hero in Simi Valley. He was a fighter. He fought dudes like Dan Severn and shit like that, right? Early fighting. Yeah, because the Metal Militia used to sponsor when they UFC used to let them they sponsored, athletes get yeah. sponsored. They They're sponsored the a bunch of dudes. Yeah. 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 No, I remember that. Metal Militia stuff was the shit back then. It was, yeah, like, it was. kind of like an underground. thing. I still it was got hard yeah. to get. Yeah, it was. Like, it was yeah. kind of like a little culty thing, right? Like yeah. you had to be part of a little clique to be to have their shit yeah. or like be cool like them, you know? Right. But uh, so I was at this house, and Mark Smith uh, was like, <clears throat> he knew those two dudes, and I guess the one that I knocked out was a uh, a black belt, like a, uh, a hop keto black belt or something. And so I was like, I was like, okay, cool, your boy fucking was picking on Josh, and I fucking laid him out like fuck your boy, you know what I mean? And he goes, oh, you think you're tough, fucking, you know what I mean? He said that you sideblind him, whatever, yada yada. And I was like, bullshit. I was like, two of them, we were talking face to face. He was talking shit. Said he wanted. To, said he was gonna kick my ass. So, so the I, guy was lying about getting his own his ass kicked. Yeah, yeah basically, yeah. sat sideline. I told him like I sideline him because he. I know he recognized my uh, girlfriend's time because mm-hmm. you know what I mean. They're all we're all friends. 
It's a small town. Everyone knows each other. You, like, you know how that is. Right. Selling circle. Yeah, growing up here. And so uh, Mark's like, oh, you think you're fucking tough. Ch- cheap shot in these dudes, yada, yada. And I was like, I didn't cheap shot that boy. He got hit in the face. You know what I mean? But then I was like, and when I moved to see me, they didn't know how to deal with me because I grew up in the valley. And in the valley, I grew up really rough. And if someone said something to me, I didn't say anything back. I would just start swinging. Like, what the fuck's the point of me to say something to you? Like, it's time to fight then. Fuck you. Right. right? And I would just pop people in their fucking mouth. Right. I would just start punching people. Yeah, like, I was kind of taught like. Nice guy finishes last. Why they're thinking about what they're going to say next? Hit him in the mouth. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. Type of thing. That's the that was the mentality that I was. Yeah, and and, and I was like, I, I was taught the same thing, but I was also taught to gauge it right. So like, yeah. For instance, if someone's, I wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> if someone's just talking shit to you and whatever, that's one thing. But if someone's being aggressive and, and right. the situation's different, then you know you take care of your shit. And so that's what I did. And then Mark's like, oh, you th- go to a gym, fight some real fighters. Let's see how tough you really are. So I was like, mm-hmm. fuck, tell me where to go. He sent me to this gym. Uh, what was it called? Scrap scrap Timer? I think it was called Scrap Time. This guy, man, I don't want to talk too much shit, but this guy's pretty <laughs> shady. He's probably got to change his gym name a few times from shit. But I think at the time it was called Scrap Time. I was training there for like a month. I got there. Mark's like, go to this place. I'm like, cool. I told the owner. Hey, this guy sent me down here. Oh, fuck yeah. He's my boy. I've known him for years. I got you deal. You come in, you train uh, 115 bucks a month. You train. I was like, cool. I was like, I don't want to be taking your fucking soccer mom classes. I want to be coming in here. I want to be trained to beat the fuck out of people because that's what I'm going to do when I come in here. I'm not coming in here to mess around. I'm coming in here to fight. I want to make sure I'm <laughs> so coming you've in here always to fight. Because you have that same mentality now. Like, Yeah, my mentality hasn't and changed. And I know this didn't go the way that you wanted it to in the Madsen fight, but I love watching you fight because you were talking shit. I think at one point yeah. you were like, "Which I you was better little, watch out, motherfucker." Yeah, I was a little embarrassed like about that. that because I normally Why? do talk shit, but I didn't like. I didn't know they they mic'd me that time, and I didn't know. So normally I, I that, do say. Was there things. an audience there then, or yeah, there was an audience there. Okay. Yeah, but the reason why I was talking shit to him is because he he made a post on social media and was like something about he's gonna throw me around and not to skip mm-hmm. wrestling day. So I'm like, don't get hurt, motherfucker. I'm going to see you on this day, right? <laughs> and then he ended up getting hurt, flaking out for whatever reason. And then I told them, they offered me Nazareth Harpquest, who Bobby ended up fighting. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, no, nah, I don't want him. I want I want Madsen because I want to take his Oh, that's right. And then they rebooked us because I think he- But then it was like a short turnaround. Like he was hurt yeah. and then like a couple yeah. days later he wasn't or something. Yeah, and right? I'm not sure what it was. I think he just tried to dodge me and, and it didn't work, honestly. I think they, I think it was something like that because I'm a dangerous fight for him just as much as he's a dangerous fight for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, yeah, that fucking shit. I mean, that was a brawl. That was an exciting fight to watch. Yeah, but I was super embarrassed because I heard it. I heard it, and I was like, holy fuck, they heard me say that shit. Dude, the commentators, I think Rogan was commentating it, and they were fucking dying laughing, dude. They were like... But that's why I was talking shit to him. That's why I was talking shit to him, though. It's because of that, because he made a post talking shit, and so I was like, just wait. And then I don't know if you hear the rest, because in between the rounds, I was kicking him and punching him. I'm like, you fucking tired yet, motherfucker? Like, it's time to go. (laughs) Man, that was the first time I beat a dude's ass and still lost the fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so cheated, dude. Yeah. What round was that? It, was, it had to be like the second. Or... I think that was in the very beginning, honestly. Was it? Yeah. Because I clipped him with something. I seen his eyes yeah. cross. I clipped him. I like slapped him and I seen his eyes cross. And I was like, yeah, you better watch out, motherfucker. Just looking at him makes me sick. I don't know what it is about his face. You might have to pull your mic around, Jeremy, so we can hear it a little more. Where was it? This was a good fight, man. I need to go back and actually watch this again. He surprised me a little bit. Yeah. I was expecting him to calf kick, but I wasn't expecting him to rely on it so much. And then I was expecting him to try to engage more and clinch with me, but he didn't. I was actually working a lot of clinch work because I wanted to clinch with him and fuck him up in the clinch, but he didn't clinch with me at all. Does this piss you off going back and watching your own film or stuff like that? Or like, you know, no. some football players go back and, or most football teams go back and watch film well, and stuff. Up, do you guys do that as fighters? Yeah, I do. And I've watched this back a couple of times and I've just, that's why like I made a post afterwards and I just felt like mad. And I felt more pissed off and embarrassed about myself than anything because uh, I let, I let my emotions get the best of me in this, right? Where I was like, I need to fuck this dude up. I don't care where it is. I need to fuck him up instead of thinking like, this is a competition and I need to win the competition, you know? Because, like, it wasn't, 
if you watch the fight, he wasn't really holding me down any particular time where I couldn't get up. I was trying to, I was trying to hit him and submit him because I wanted a submission. Admittingly, I wanted to get a submission. I wanted him to be my first submission because I thought that would be like just a fucking stamp on that. You yeah. Know what I mean? And so, like, I don't know. I just, I just made a poor life choice in that aspect where I didn't, I didn't just get up and keep punching him more. I should have just done that and not worried about it. But I wanted a submission. I mean, so, you were like, fucking close. A couple yeah. of times in this. Yeah, and I almost had him with that calf slicer. And when I camored him in the end of the third, I popped his elbow. So, like, That's I know right. he's... That's right. You had him in a leg lock at some like, point. Like, he's right? hurt. Yeah, the whole, almost the whole second I had him in that yeah. in that, that calf slicer. But uh, they didn't give me any credit for that. They gave him credit for that. So, I think that's... Really? Yeah. They didn't give me any submission attempts. And I didn't get any credit for that second round at all for my uh, control time. Oh, man. That is one thing that frustrates me. Oh, yeah. I was right there. <laughs> It was, right, uh, it was that right hand. I slapped him with that right listen, hand. I seen his eyes listen cross. Listen to the commentators. That's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> 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 you guys are fucking cracking up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I fucking slapped him with that right. I seen his eyes cross. <laughs> But Shouldn't as a fan, laugh. I love watching that, man. And right away, I was like, I'm, I mean, I've watched a lot of your fights and been a fan of you for quite a while, <laughs> you know, you, before you, you even came to Factory X. And it was just like, if if Vince was stepping in the ring, you know that there were some fireworks that were going to go off. So Yeah, like, I just love fighting. I like that spiciness, you know. Because to me, it's it's more than just a physical fight. It's a it's a mental fight, too, right? Like, right. We're, in there, we're in there playing physical chess or physical checkers is what it is. Or chess, yeah, chess, not yeah. checkers. And so, like, to me, it's a mind game. And uh, this is why, like, another big part of why all the way I was is because I could I could smell that motherfucker's fear. He was so afraid to be in there with me. And I could just, f- I could see it coming out of his fucking pores. And so that was, like, another part of why I was just fighting him the way I was, right? Like, I didn't, I didn't respect him at all. I gave him no respect in the striking. I was like, fuck it. He hit me one or two times. I was like, cool, let's go. Right, you know what I mean? And yeah. so... That's what let my pride get the best of me in that fight. And, like, it just sucks. I gave him that win. I gave him that win and I yeah. shouldn't have. But that's the only thing that makes I mean, me mad about it is just that I made a poor life choice in that aspect. Is there a chance to run it back, you think? or you Possibly, think but I doubt some... he'd take that. He would. He, I doubt he would take it unless it was for something, you know what I mean? So if right. it was, like, a top five position or even for a title shot, he'd probably take that again. But yeah, I doubt it otherwise. Same with Gregor. I don't think he'd take that fight again either. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's it's definitely a it another sucks. level. Of it sucks because my only losses are the suck, fucking wrestlers, right? and it's I like know. I can't beat a fucking wrestler now. <laughs> no, I I guarantee <laughs> like, I beat wrestlers. Right? Like like yeah. I've stomped on wrestlers, but fuck man. Yeah, my only losses no, are the wrestlers. I mean, a lot of it is it comes down to the judging too, man. It's so piss poor and kind of backwards, you know. Yeah. And some of these like we've seen so many people get robbed. Or I have as a fan, I, I feel like. Yeah, like for instance, you know, Yusuf Zalal, this last fucking card. Yeah. Uh, he I don't won the know. first. And, it's a fucking draw? Yeah. Yeah. That was bullshit to me. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's definitely something that they need to work on. I know everybody's kind of on their ass about it, but it's like, why, why is it so hard? Is it because of the boxing commissions that are involved in fighting that there I, ha- it has to be this way? I think also? it's honestly because of the variables. In fighting, there's just too many variables. It's yeah. not like boxing where it's like you got punches and if this punch hits, it hurts somebody or right. doesn't, right? We're fighting, you have you have takedowns, you have punches, you have kicks, you have knees. You have you have guys who get hit that could just take it sometimes, right? And you don't know. So like uh I don't I don't know what their actual criteria is on judging, but I know a lot of it has to do with like domination and the positioning, the controlling, right? Like that's obviously one. I know aggression should be one, right? Like who's the aggressor, who's controlling it? And these things cause problems because sometimes the aggressor isn't the guy that's always winning, right? Uh, for instance, <clears throat> I don't think uh, DJ Dillashaw beat Sanhagen. I agree. He was the aggressor in that fight, and he had him backed up, and he and he laid on him against the cage that whole time, right, and controlled him. But what did he do? He stalled out the position in a fight. Why is stalling legal in MMA? Yeah. It's not legal in any other sport. Yeah, no, it's... <clears throat> Every other sport you get, you lose for It is, and that is one of my biggest, like, I am a major fan of the UFC, and I'm not knocking it by any means, but I got into watching a little bit of Combat Samba, too, and just because they have five minutes, those guys are fucking throwing down for that five minutes, <laughs> and they travel around the world to go fucking do a five-minute Yeah, that shit's and pretty And that's nuts. all they got, right? And, uh, 
a lot of the same sort of rules. There's some headgear and different stuff. It's not quite to this level, and I don't think that the fighters and my buddy Zach Haynes is an incredible combat sambas world world champion and and stuff like that, or not world champion, but national champion and has fought in worlds and stuff. But uh, but yeah, I feel like you know there's some of that feeling out, especially when you get into and I can't I can't speak for any of this. You know, this is the this is my other issue with the UFC is the fans are so critical about shit and they're sitting there armchair quarterbacking a lot of it. And I don't want to come off like I'm doing that, but definitely like if you look at, uh, who did Rose fight last? Um, didn't she fight? Uh, she lost her title. Yeah. She lost her title to, uh, Asparza. Asparza. Yep. That fight was like, there was maybe 20 strikes in it. Yeah. It was a lot of, like, they were feeling each other out the whole time. And, like, that's my issue in a lot of, like, first rounds. But then you get somebody like a Justin Gaethje or yourself or, you know, there's going to be fireworks, like, right out the gate. Yeah, sometimes sometimes guys will walk through the fire for a tan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely like that. but And that's why, like, I don't know. It's it's really hard. And, and honestly, I talk shit about the judges a lot and, and some referees and whatnot. But... They do have a really hard job, and uh, I, I, I just honestly, I wish they would do a little better sometimes too. But what do you do? You, you make them have experience in it, right? But and so, how do they do that? They involve themselves in the world. They be part of the fighting. They train. They fight. They compete. But what does could that do? Could it be old fighters? Because that was one of my thoughts. It's like, could it be retired guys yes. that maybe don't want to get into commentary? Maybe they don't want to, and they still want to be around the sport. Yeah, and this is where I was leading. So then you have guys like that, right, who have been in it, who have competed. But then what happens when they're judging? They're biased towards I people know, they that's might know. That's the problem because there's camps and it's yes, lineages be... that go deep, right? And yeah. you're talking about martial arts at the so now it becomes that aspect uh, of it. Pick your poison, right? What would you rather have? Would you rather have like something like that, or and deal with like a super biased bullshit sometimes, where it's like, hey, you can't even talk shit because if you right. talk shit, he's gonna fuck you next time, right? And he knows you too, so good luck, and hope right. you're not fighting one of his boys, especially. Yeah. Or do you deal with people who are just underqualified and fuck up because they're just dumb as shit and don't know what they're looking at sometimes? Well, you know? what frustrates me is I'm a dumb mountain guy that Scott has had bashed in a couple times whether it's playing football or wrecking on dirt bikes or car accidents at five years old in the Lincoln continental <laughs> you know i'm not the s sharpest guy out there but i have fucking common sense and when i'm sitting on my couch watching fucking a fight go that's totally one-sided and it goes to a decision the opposite direction yeah that's frustrating because <clears throat> i i mean i know a little bit about fighting but i'm no really professional is. like i don't train you know, I roll a little jujitsu here or there, but that's and that's why people I think it. like striking more because you can't really do that in striking. Like, you, right, you have to throw, you have to go, right? And that's why I like striking because that's like the purest form of of reality of truth. Right? Let's see who who really has more, yeah. and you're gonna find out who, right? Like, you can't lie about that kind that of thing. That stand up game is no joke. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I love fighting too, is because you can't lie about fighting. Like, you're gonna find out the truth. Like, the truth is gonna come out right there. Oh yeah, but the uh, but it's I, the but, same with jujitsu though too. You get on a jujitsu mat, you can't sit there and say that you're a black belt and then go and roll. Yeah, and, and then I, get your I, ass there beat, are some right? gyms because be of worthless. my traveling around where I've gone in and rolled against black belts that were obviously <laughs> given to them, you yeah. know, and not really <laughs> earned. Um, you know, there's some white belts over at some of the those Gracie gyms and stuff that would just pummel. Yeah. Some of these dudes that I've rolled against that I will say that too. There's black belts, definitely you know, levels to so. to the games. Yeah. Because I've rolled the black belts and I've rolled black belts who are actually black belts. And right. the difference is pretty astonishing. Like uh, I've rolled with Gilbert uh, Burns. Yeah. And I've never felt so helpless in my life. I've rolled other black belts, one as a blue belt in you know, blue and purple, who I've strangled the shit out of and like they couldn't even touch me. So I like I've seen that in both or in both sides of it too, and I'm like, fuck, that's crazy. That really opened my eyes too, and made me think like, fuck a gi. Why do I need to wear a gi? It doesn't apply to fighting. Like it might help me with my. It basics doesn't for and something. this. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't really apply to me here. And at the time, I was super young, so I was like, my mentality was like, fuck, I'm not gonna wear pajamas. I'm just gonna fight. We right. Can't, we can't pull clothes anyway. Fuck it. My mentality is always, I don't want to go up and belt 
level, so I switch around gym. So I'm <laughs> pretty seasoned white belt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking sandbagger over here, dude. Taking the stripes off. <laughs> dude, you know what's funny is I actually told my coach, uh, Brian, I didn't want to get belt promoted either because I'd rather not be a black belt and com- be able to compete with black belts and have that's a black belt saying. and that's be expected mentality. of something, you know. Right. But then I, it's like, okay, and you're I want to earn it, right? Like that's the other part of it. Yeah, that yeah. too. Earning is pretty nice. But I think there are some scenarios, and I had to use it one time, um, where training in a gi is helpful in some of those chokeholds and stuff. In a real life scenario, yeah, you put a fucking somebody's wearing a leather jacket, they might as well be wearing a gi top. Well you wearing know what gi, I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> those with, collar with chokes and shit are no <laughs> joke. Yeah, oh, zipper. Fuck no. Yeah. Yeah, and you, what's funny is too is I, I actually started wearing a gi a little bit. I, I mean, I don't I don't wear it now like religiously, but I did wear a gi a bunch just so I could learn those things for yeah. that exact reason. Or the spider guard type stuff where you're holding on to somebody's sleeve. You're yeah. helpless when you yeah. like when you can roll your Which fingers. Which I actually up use that a lot. Into, like, yeah. I use that guard a lot when I roll jujitsu. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It is. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> fuck, what was I saying? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I'm really good at sidetracking. I know. People. I know. We were oh, talking yeah, okay. About... So we're going with the story. So, yeah. uh, so Mark got me to challenge me into this gym, and it's kind of a, like a good but a shitty story at the same time because it's man, things in my life fell together sometimes, and 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 it's almost to me unbelievable. Where like you said earlier, it's almost like a movie, right? Where my life has been like that in too many occasions that I can remember, and too many vital points in my life that have led me to where I am today, and one of them is this. So. Uh, that the, for instance, I, I get in that fight, right? It happens to be Mark's friend who I already knew Mark at the time. Right. But we just never really talked about me getting in a fight. And he knew I was a punk. He knew I'd gotten a lot of fights on the weekends and shit, right? Like I fought every <laughs> weekend basically. And so, uh, you know, I'm going to the gym, I'm training, I pay him, you know, the 115 bucks the first month. We're cool. Get my ass kicked. I absolutely love it. I'm like, this motherfucker's got superpowers that I want. Let's do this. Right. Um, I'm training there the next month. He's like, oh, 125. I was like, whoa, what, 10 bucks more? And he's like, yeah, well, you're doing everything. I didn't realize you were so serious. He's like, 125. He's like, we're going to get you fighting soon. I was like, cool. Here's your money. Boom. Next month, he goes, 135. <clears throat> I go, hey, now what is it, right? He goes, well, the commission is charging more for this and this. So I'm going to have to charge more because they're making me do it and yada, yada. And at the time, I didn't really know too much about fighting or the way things worked, but I did know that it's his business and no one else decides your prices and your business besides you, right? So I, I was like, this is off. Something's up. I was like, you know what? Uh, that's cool. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. This is going to be, I'm, I'm done. Fuck that. He's like, whoa, what are you talking about? Right. I was like, well, I'm not going to pay you 10 bucks a month more every month until I'm eventually broke. Like, do you see where this is going? Like, and I think that that's what happens in a lot of jujitsu gyms is they like people don't realize how long it takes to become an actual yeah. fucking black belt, right? It takes so years like, and a lot. They got to keep people interested, and if they feel like they're making no progress, that's one of the worst feelings in the world, right? Is like yeah. just grinding and making no progress. Yeah. And you know about it this. is. Yeah, I mean, as a professional fighter, I think every professional fighter experiences this every competitor feels it right like we all hit plateaus in our in our training in our in our skill set and so that's a really shitty thing yeah that's a really shitty thing to feel and i have felt that plateau a couple times but i've also felt really big leaps and bounds too so and i think that that cuts into jujitsu i can't say that word (laughs) jujitsu gym's money yeah because people start to fall off like they're like or yeah. fuck i only made it to a purple belt that's all i want to be or whatever you know whatever that yeah or people get satisfied they get complacent they're they're happy right. with what they've got you know what i mean and and i don't know i'm not that per- i'm never happy uh, i'm glad i'm, I'm not in happy. that business man <laughs> yeah. and so yeah so okay i'm out of here you know what i mean i'm not i'm not gonna do this until i'm broke and he's like well you know what you're mark's friend i'll tell you what let's just drop it back to 115 and, and we'll, we'll just call it there and I was like, okay, you know what? Now that you just said that, go fuck yourself. I'm out of here. And I walked out. Nice. Um, I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm just going to quit. I'm going to go back to work. At the time, I was working as an electrician. I was learning how to be an electrician at the time. My buddy Steve, who was a foreman, got me the job. So I was driving from Simi Valley to Bakersfield every morning, which is a two-hour drive on my that's motorcycle. A, that's a commute. Yes, on my CBR 600 RR with oh, a 60-pound tool bag on the fucking back of that thing. Splitting lanes and shit, too. Same bitch, yeah. <laughs> splitting lanes, doing a buck 30 so I get there quicker, just so I don't have to be on that uh, fucking bike for any longer than I have to. Work my 10 hours, because I only work Monday through Thursday. I'd ride home, take a shower, drive back another half hour, up back up to Valencia, where 
or actually out to, uh, well, at the time that was in Simi. And then, uh, okay, so let me continue my story. I'm jumping ahead here. So uh, I was still driving out the Bakersfield, but I was just working it. I was driving that place, and that place was in Simi. Then when I quit there, I didn't train for a week, and my buddies, uh, Marco, Bjorn, Casey, who were there, who I still, who still train action, I still have contact with, they were like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm just fucking chilling at home. I was at the gym lifting again. I started lifting. Before I started training, too, I was uh, lifting, and I was big. I was like almost 200 pounds, just jacked, right? You just, were 200 pounds? Yeah, I was a beefy motherfucker. What dude. do you walk around at now? Like 160, 160? No, I'm pretty light now. I'm like mid-70s. Because your division's 155? Yeah, 55. Right? Yeah. I'm like mid-70s, low 80s right okay, now. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But back home in California, I was like 90, low 90s. Wow. I was like between 85 and 95 was my typical weight. And once I moved out here, I got really light at first where I was below 70. And I was like, fuck, I think I have cancer or something. I was telling coach, the like, altitude, something's wrong man. with me. Yeah. yeah. Like, what is this? And he's like, no, it's just the altitude. It's just this. Your body will adjust and you'll eventually start to gain your weight back. And which I am, right? I'm getting my weight back, but I haven't gained back to where I normally am, which I'm not too b- pissed off about because my weight cuts have been easy. And they do not get easier over time. Right. <laughs> they get harder. They fucking suck. And I that's the only thing about fighting. Oh, I know like about is that. Just in age, I can imagine. And then the that's amount that you guys have to cut, you know, yeah. is fucking insane. So I'll give an example. When I fought Anthony and Jaquani, mm-hmm. I wore a weighted vest for that fight, the whole training camp, just so I'd be a beefcake for that fight. And I was walking around at 193. I cut down to 174 i think or 173 and then i dehydrated the rest down to 55 Shit. and the next day when i fought anthony and jaquani i was 189 pounds i posted a photo on my instagram of me the next morning before i ate breakfast 189 pounds that is wild does that just fucking wreck you like energy wise or do you honestly no i felt like a fucking shit house bro really? like yeah i felt so strong and back then we were allowed iv bags too so i had two iv bags they don't allow that now they don't allow it now no they took really they took, yeah they took the ivs away they took it away a couple years ago why because people were putting other <clears throat> shit in them or was it probably well, i think a little bit of that but also i think uh guys were relying on them too much and so right. we were having a lot of bad weight cuts people were going to the hospital and almost fucking dying right their organs were shutting down and I, I think that's because they were relying too much on that on that uh, IV bag afterwards to get them back, and they were cutting too much weight and it taking their self in that danger zone. Fucking world of difference, dude. I would get one every week if dude, I could afford it. I'll tell you what, when I when Especially I cut that you start in, throwing some vitamins in there, or oh, that fuck NAD yeah. shit. Oh fuck. shit, yeah, some BCAs smokes, in there, yeah. all that, some some bees, some bees in there. Fuck yeah, you'd be jacked. But uh, I remember feeling like absolute dog shit when I cut that weight for Anjaquani. And my, I felt like I was underwater. Like my uh, senses were fucked. I cut weight. I get through it. I'm sitting in the hotel room. I get the IV bag. And five minutes later, I'm like, sweet fucking nectar. I felt so good. I, and that was the first time I ever IV bag too. And uh, I felt so good. I was like fucking Superman. I was like, let yeah. me get another one. Hook that shit to my <laughs> veins, right? Hook me up. And so the nurse was like, fuck yeah, boom. Yeah. I had one in each arm. We were just plugged. They were squeezing the bags. I was like, fuck yeah. I'm eating my peanut butter jellies with my goldfish and my fucking yeah. cheese its Getting my weight back up, you know? Oh, man, that was nice. <laughs> That's awesome. That was a good way. When up. I had COVID, I had called up uh, my buddy Gunner at Rocky Mountain IV shout out to those guys man they were awesome oh, they came up yeah. and they were lacing me up here and i was oh, like dude shit. i got covid you know so he's like i'll just come to your house so i was <laughs> like well meet no me words at the, were good <laughs> yeah meet me at the stu- no he literally just showed up he's like whatever dude i'm around all the time he's like yeah i recommend this this and that i mean he had a whole little it was like the drug dealer you know he's like yeah i would stack this one like getting pill billy you know but <laughs> I went through an iv bag and it was like yeah i recommend stacking this with this and that and I called Jeremy like, I don't know, an hour later. I was like, dude, I feel better than I did before I had fucking COVID. Like, yeah, right. You know, like, <laughs> He's like, you need to get in on this. <laughs> How much you sell these things for? Yeah. No, it's <laughs> Can you drink them? dude. There was like $500 or some shit. Yeah. Dude. Like you start getting into those NADs and all that. I said, buddy, that was a paramedic. He used to just snag yeah. them. Bro. Yeah, so man. Nice. Uh, that's it makes a world of difference and you know what's crazy is i was dealing with uh plantar's fasciitis for a while oh I don't shit know if had yeah that. i know sucks, i've never dude. had it but i've known people that sucks. Have. it's not debilitating but it's just the constant pain in that foot yeah yeah and the dick and the dick. Uh, <laughs> but uh it crazy i got i think i had three ivs in the matter of like 10 days or something damn and it went away 
Holy shit. I don't know if it was just a coincidence from me not training because I had COVID and was just kind of taking it easy or. I mean, COVID, I'll, I'll be, I'll be honest. Admittedly, when COVID first came out, I was worried. I was like, fuck, that sounds really bad. And if I get it, I'm just going to fucking off myself. Cause fuck, I ain't going out like that. You know I what I mean? There's a lot of people that fucking did, man. Yeah, I think so too. But then as the numbers came out, I was like, oh, it's really not that bad. It's like no worse. Than Dude, when I got it, sickness. it was like nothing yeah and and, and I, I was overweight then too man like, oh were pretty you pretty bad yeah shit see i uh i infected myself i chicken pox partied myself did you it. yeah, yeah because, fucking why not because after a while i started like i was just like you know what like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna bite the bullet i have a really good immune system too like i'm one of those people that yeah. rarely get and you're sick. in fighter shape i mean yeah so and i'm like... in really good shape to care of myself right and so I don't know. In my eyes, when I see these pieces of shit, like at the CDC, who are turds that don't take care of themselves, trying to tell me how to live my life, I'm like, right. go fuck yourself, right? So, I uh, I infected myself with it. I got sick. I wasn't really that bad. I had a pretty gnarly headache for like two, three days. Um, I didn't have really bad coughing. It was like mildly there. Uh, I lost my taste and my smell. That didn't. That's a while I did to lose come back. my taste, but it's back now. For yeah. the longest time, I used to drink coffee like crazy. <laughs> Just and I was now. like, dude, this is like fucking hot water. And I'm like making it stronger. And I'd be like shaking from all the fucking <laughs> oh, caffeine, fuck. but I couldn't taste the coffee. You know? Oh, shit. Sure. Yeah. Shit. I, think I, I think I got mine back in like six to eight months. I think it okay. took for my yeah, smell, about my taste to come back. It took for mine to come back. But then I was like, no big deal. And then uh, my mom had it after that. And I went to visit her and try to infect myself again. I didn't even get it. I didn't get sick at all. I had no I've been around it a bunch it. since I've had it. And it's like, yeah, me too. And that's why I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to risk it. Cause I like, I'm not the kind of guy heard him. Really safe man, really like, anyway. Yeah. yeah. And like, if I'm honest, like without being too braggy, like I'm one of those herd immunity guys that will like, you know what I mean? Get it and dumb it down for everybody else. So yeah. like, I'm more than willing to fucking do that. You know, no, it makes, it makes much more sense than fucking living your life in a cave, you know, and yeah, to I've, hide from everybody because I've just never been that I way. I know people that are going through that, you know. Yeah, like, I do. You know, too. I have family members that are immune compromised and scared to death and then they got it and they got those monoclonal antibodies and breezed through it like it was fucking nothing. Yeah. You right. Know? And it's, it's, like, it's God damn, you were living in fear for yeah a year and a half it's like anything then, else take care of yourself you'll be all right yeah you know what i mean it's like, a big part of it it's something that you definitely need to be conscious of but mm -hmm. you don't need to it's not stronger than us you know what i mean it's yeah. not stronger than you i think that it was a wake-up call for a lot of people including myself like fuck dude some of the shit that some of the decisions of partaking <laughs> on this counter every <laughs> hey, night hey, hey, like, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh that still happens believe me but like yeah it, it definitely was an eye-opener and yeah, our, our number one threat in, in, I mean, not right now, but our number one threat used to be our diet, honestly. Like, yeah. um, heart it disease. It still is, is for me, dude. I struggle so fucking bad. I just went through, a, honestly, a life changing 140 days that I'm now on this diet. You didn't have Plus. like a fucking heart attack or something, did you? No. Uh, well, that was my biggest fear is heart disease runs in my family. I'm 60% uh, Italian. And I don't know about you being Italian, but. My metabolism is like fucking slowed way down. And yeah. I used to be super active. And even, you know, if I ate pizza or something like I, that, I worry or, about that myself. You know, it was like constant. Like I could just gain weight. Well, it got to a point where I was going to jujitsu a couple times a week. I'm in the backcountry all the time. I'm a bow hunter. I was training for that in the summer. In the summer, I'd drop some weight, but I just was progressively like, every year of my life was going up another 10 pounds and but my activity was staying the same so i think it's just getting older and body starting to slow yeah. down and stuff and i was like fuck this isn't working and i've so i tried like well, a let, keto let, me, let me ask you this real quick uh, did you shit. did you ever like take a step back and wonder so this is what i've done too and and i've i've noticed this and i've only done it through taking a step back and, and realizing my own actions but do you feel like it's just because you're getting older and and you're just gaining that weight or do you feel like it's because you're getting older and you're doing things a little differently, right? It's because you're, of that. It's not because of the activity. Because I feel like I put more activity out. But obviously being a father, you know, taking a step back when the kids go to ice cream or whatever. You yeah, know, yeah, you're, you're there with that them, too, right? Yeah. So it's like. Can't be the only ones eating ice cream, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> and my daughter's trying to talk me off a cliff. So I've been on the carnivore diet for Oh, have you? Yeah, hundred and some. I've dropped sixty pounds. Nice. Today, How have you like, been feeling? Oh, fucking great. So I know this guy Jake who actually uh, works at Barwis. He's a, a PT over at Barwis. Shout mm -hmm. out to Barwis. Uh, 
And he's he's just started on that too, and he's got psoriasis and stuff, and it's actually helped him a lot feel a lot I better. Know, it's got rid of that. And immune and a bunch yeah. of skin. Like I had a nothing really major skin wise, but I noticed my skin is cleared up. Like my reaction time, I'm definitely the first month, dude. I was ready to fucking kill somebody, <laughs> bro. Like I'm a little bit more spicy. I'm not afraid to. You know, I'm not afraid to do, <laughs> to say certain things sometimes that I catch myself, you know, like yeah, almost like I, I never really did roids or anything like that. But like, you know, you catch yourself when you're on some of those supplements, you know, yeah. you're like, ah, what am I doing? You know, <laughs> I'm in a mood right now, aren't yeah, I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. And it, it's definitely, it was, it was hard at first, but it's, I feel fucking great. Um, my, I was on blood pressure. Uh, blood pressure medication and that's what oh, first shit. like spiked it. it was like okay wait a minute i got pretty good cardio i wasn't like yeah you know when, but when they want to when they want to put that, you on things for a lifetime yeah. that's a different story and i think some of that 60 pounds has definitely been some muscle mass too so i will say that that like it well that's okay really that kind of comes yeah, with yeah. it too you know that's just part of it right. and that's not a bad thing no it's not i feel better and i've uh just went in and got a bunch of blood work done i got the spectra cell actually shout out to mark montoya for kind of turning me on to some stuff i oh, was nice. like i called him up i was like dude i've dropped a bunch of weight i'm on this crazy diet and i want to make sure that a i'm taking care of myself and i'm not fucking myself up long term so i got some awesome doctors that have been helping me out I just got a bunch of blood work. I'm waiting for that to come back, and I'm not selling it to everybody just yet. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, that 23 me motherfuckers yeah, yeah, yeah. probably slinging all kinds of DNA right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so uh, I got to see what's up. But, uh, yeah, if, if it's fucking work, dude. I feel good. Man, strong. that's good. Good for yeah. you, man. I'm glad. Yeah. That's good, that's good yeah. to hear. That's it's good been good, to hear. man. It's good. I needed to do something. Yeah. And it was a drastic step, but, like, I don't know. It, for me, Happiness. honestly – the best part of it, aside from losing all the weight and stuff, is just having the mental uh, discipline to not fucking touch a potato chip or a fucking, you know. Yeah. Even like my I daughter. I bet you feel like, a lot better oh, too. Taste like this ice cream. I'm like, no, stuff. baby, you know, like steak and element. Slushies is it. That's all I've eaten for fucking. Oh, damn. Yeah. Element slushies, you Dude, savage. Those actually, things are that good, is huh? one thing. If you're considering doing it, you got to watch your salt intake to make sure that you're actually getting salt. Because in your everyday food, there's plenty of salt to get by, but without it. Well, what uh, meats are you eating? Thing. What meats are you eating? Uh, I eating mean, fish, like fish and chicken, or no? Just really red meat it was mainly? The wildest fucking thing. So when I first started it, I was eating a, like a savage, dude, fucking bacon and and chicken and steak and I have a bunch of wild game. So I was eating a lot of that. And then I kind of, I, I consider it more of a, than the carnivore diet and an elimination diet. So once I get the spectra cell blood work back, it tells you vitamin deficiencies and uh. nutrient defense deficiencies. And I'm hoping that I can add some like fruits and some of that kind of back in to okay. kind of count. Did you just take that. one of those tests? Uh, I just did. Yeah. Okay. So let me, let me give you a little uh, insight on, on my okay. thought process in those tests. I like those tests cause they give you that stuff, but, uh, I don't like that. They just take one test. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's just that one test, you know, okay. When you get that test back, they're going to say, okay, you're low on this, this, and this, and this, and this, right. You're good on this, this, this. So let's say you take another test. That test is going to come out completely different than what that is. Cause you don't really have a guideline or a base. And so what you're eating and, and, you know what I mean, your daily life and the things like that will alter that test drastically oh, as far 100%. as what you'll get. So if, if you're going to do those tests, I recommend doing them probably like once a week for like maybe a month. That way you have a good steady thing over They're some course of time. Too. I yeah, know. Yeah. And that's what sucks about it. And uh, but that's how you're going to really get a good benefit. No, from that, that makes sense. Because I feel yeah. like, man, like. That's why they call fucking medical field of practice because these motherfuckers are just doing what oh, they feel like doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and it really is, and that's how they get away with a lot of shit. But that's why like doctors fucking hate me, bro, because I do shit like that. When they do tests, I'm like, no, you're not just gonna do one fucking test, and that's gonna be that, because that's not gonna be that's bullshit, right? Right. We need, we need a control, and then we need some sort of actual fucking test to go against that control, so we know what the reality is. Yeah, no, and I think actually the plan is to do this, you know three, four, five, six, seven times, okay, right? Good, but yeah. probably not that close. How much they charge you for those tests? Luckily, I got somebody hooking me up. Oh, do you? So, okay. Yeah, or maybe cool. even once a month, but you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Though? It's, it's a doctor like a that line. actually has choked me out a couple of times. So. Oh, for, oh I think fucking, I know who he is. He's a badass dude. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's a good guy. Um, <laughs> I think I know what you're like, well, that's cool. 
Yeah. Uh, but anyways, we're f- fucking working on on that, and I think that that's one thing is like I've been eating. Well, I found out that like okay, if I eat fish, I don't feel as satisfied or as good. If I eat beef steak, I feel fucking great. Yeah. If I eat pork, I don't feel that good. If I eat chicken, it's good, but I'm not satisfied, right? And then like that's funny. You say oh, that. if I have a ribeye as opposed to a fillet. I have way more energy when I eat a ribeye. So it was kind of an elimination like type thing. Like, yeah. And figuring out how my body reacts to it. And when you look at food as fuel, as opposed to pleasure, it's totally different. Yeah. Right. Cause I, I luckily the Dr. Sean Baker that I was working with was like, pay attention to what makes you feel good and what doesn't. So he's like, I'm not saying you have to stay on the carnivore diet. Everybody's body's different. Yeah. Everybody works a little bit different. But then when I noticed a drastic jump, if I eat elk or deer, it's tenfold. I feel way better than I do when I eat a beefsteak. So also too, when you're eating that, you're eating hunted game, right? Not just store-bought shit. So that's also like better meat, obviously, too. So that's probably a big part of it as well. And I got some awesome beef suppliers here too. Like Colorado Craft Beef is awesome. They're right here. And it's like a local ranch. You can go to his fucking ranch and you you can get like a half a cow. I heard there's a restaurant out here that actually uh, serves wild game meat. Oh yeah, there is. There's a couple of them. The problem with that though, and I'm not speaking (laughs) for these ones. No, a lot of that wild game meat that you buy in the store comes from like New Zealand or something. So it's fucking killed, butchered, then, you know, shipped all yeah. the way across maybe Same they were farm shit. raised you know like yeah to me there's no better way to get your meat than hunting, hunting it yeah. yeah that's just my and that was actually a big thing why i wanted to come out here too and like another another perk of me moving out here is yeah. to do that and i actually just got my hunting license oh, i got i got my rifle in the car i'm gonna go zero my scope right like oh, i'm gonna yeah. go i want that's why i asked you about a shooting range did you draw any uh big game tags or no you, not yet i'm just gonna, gonna go over the it. counter yeah i, I nice. just got the thing i have i have a small game so i could shoot like uh dude if you need any help like on stuff. how the system works or trying yeah, to figure totally, it dude, out totally. like mark's a fucking great guy yeah and i hit him up too because i want to go hunting he's a with savage him. yeah see he the goes bully kill time. Bastard? dude he's a savage yeah, i know awesome. and i want to go i want to get a bow too so i go bow hunting yeah um that's what i'm into i don't actually don't hunt with a rifle oh you don't bow yeah yeah so i want to do both because i'm gonna go bear hunting too yeah. And I don't know. I don't know if I trust a bow to go bear hunting with, right? I don't <laughs> well, the thing about a bow is it's just like it's like a martial art. You have to put in time. Yeah. You have to get good at it. Get and it, it depends skill. on there's multiple different ways that you can go. You can go traditional, which is like super primitive. You can go straight primitive like Donnie does. <laughs> But I I choose the latter to shoot a compound because I still travel. I can't travel everywhere with my bow. But you have to put in reps, man. You have to train. You have to. Yeah, yeah. Put in that. And time. I actually, uh, that's like one of the things that I focus on now as like my main thing is just bow, shooting my bow. It's like it's that's good sad. mentally. But yeah, dude, let's go shoot. I I'll take you down to a range. They'll Shit, set you down. up with a a bow, and you know, like I've taken Jeremy down. He doesn't own one, and they'll give you one off the shelf and kind of let you try it I'll out or rent it. Yeah. Did, yeah. did we rent at No Limits? How did we do that? Yeah, we rented one, and um, they set you up to your draw length. It's a nice bow, all that great. sort of stuff. And no, oh, that's cool. They set up for you. Yeah, it was just it was just fun going. Uh, first time, never done it. Before. It's fucking oh, yeah. addictive, it bro. Was, like, it was yeah, I love it. I only did archery one, one or two times, and it was when I was like in summer camps or shit like that. Right, that's the only yeah. time I've ever really got to. Shoot and that's about. totally different because that's yeah, like the, the traditional. Same. And that, the, I'm not knocking that, but I prefer to shoot a compound because it's a bit more. It's easier to control. Yeah. Right? And I enjoy I enjoy it more than hunting, and I get bashed for this all the time for saying this, but I'm being fucking truthful, people. <laughs> I enjoy shooting foam targets more than I enjoy hunting because I'm not really like a trophy hunter. I'm uh, definitely a meat hunter, yeah. and I enjoy the process of it. You just like but shooting. I have so much fun, man. We go to this uh, these 3D courses, and it's 3D foam animals that are set up in the trees like they would be in real scenarios. And some of them are shots are like off of cliffs and dang, that's um, pretty cool. There'll be mountain goats and grizzly bears and black bears. And so it's kind of the full size bison and moose caribou and you're shooting through trees and it's uneven terrain. That's pretty dope. And you kind of score it like golf. 
<laughs> so it's it's a lot of fun to go out with a buddy and they have like little targets on them you want to like hit them in the lung or yeah so they have they score it different ways and there's different associations that score it different ways but they have vital signs as part of the target and if you hit it in the heart you basically get 12 points if you hit it in the a little outside the heart uh kind of liver type areas that's 10 if you hit it anywhere in the vitals that's an eight and then if you hit it in the body, it's a five and a miss is a zero. So you go through the course and you shoot, you know, 20 targets. You're looking for Damn, you know, that's a 240, cool. right? Would be your best score. Yeah. So like if you shoot a 200, it's pretty good. And like some of the shots are way out there. Uh, <laughs> Mark's been talking about coming out with me to American Bowman. It's an indoor, yeah. it's an indoor place? No, it's, oh, it's outdoor. It's 50 acres. Oh, it's shit. private. Um, Damn, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. There's 40 targets. I want to go do that. They have 40 plus targets. That sounds actually, fun. Yeah, that sounds like fun. a lot of I've fun. I've been trying to get Jeremy to come out too. So, <laughs> I want everybody to come out. But, but yeah, dude, let's go do it. We'll do I'm it down. for sure. I'm down. <laughs> I'm so down. It's fun. It's addictive. You're gonna spend a little bit of money getting set up, but that's cool. It's worth it, man. Everything costs money. You shit. can you can go down and retrieve your arrows. You, you don't have to. Oh really? You know, buy more bullets. <laughs> It's not like a golf shoot range. Them well, shoot them out there. And like, I hey, take don't that go out back. There. You start going up to that American Bowman. They set up like a mountain goat behind a rock face. So like if you miss the target, oh. your arrow's fucked, you know? And like hey, you can spend up to like, you know, 20 bucks an arrow if you wanted to. I think mine are about 15 or 15 bucks yeah, a piece or something. So, yeah. arrows on like, that fuck, place. dude. And like, <laughs> or once you get to like start shooting really good and with a compound, you can really dial it in. To where you actually Robin Hood an arrow, so it's where oh, one arrow goes it. into the back of it. And at first, the first couple, like I was like, "Oh, sweet!" I, like hung it on the wall. That's, that's but nuts. once it happens a couple times, you're like, "Fuck!" <laughs> there goes fifteen bucks. You know, like, <laughs> you're like damn, I got damn year. good aim, but fuck, <laughs> I got to buy an arrow. Yeah, it's still kind of cool. But I used not. to work with this guy. Uh, Tyler, Tyler, who used to bring his compound bow with him on the job. Mm -hmm. And one day we were working on this avocado farm. This is how I found out he brought the bow with him everywhere he went. As we were working on this avocado farm, the avocado guy was like, hey, if you could, whatever avocados you want, they're yours, go ahead and take them. Just don't pick them out of the trees, but just take the ones off the floor. We're like, cool. So I'm sitting there and I'm picking up avocados. All of a sudden I hear a thump, whap. I turn and look, what the fuck was that noise? And he's sitting there, he's got a bow in his hand. I'm like, where the fuck did you get that thing from? He's like, this is mine. <laughs> I was like, where the fuck did you get that? He's like, I ha he's like, I always have it with me. And I was like, really? He's like, I was like, the fuck you carry a bow with you 24 seven? He's like, yeah, it's always in the toolbox. Right. I was like, fuck, okay. That's pretty tight. I was like, damn, let's shoot some shit. Right. Yeah. Dude, he had a badass bow. It had like a little red dot on it and it had like little ticks for yeah. like the, you know, the range, whatever. Yeah. That's how mine is. I'm, I wish I had it here. Sometimes it was don't pretty tell anybody dumb. I shoot in here every once in a while. <laughs> just to like practice my release. Not the walls are padded. No yeah. one can hear <laughs> But, uh. But yeah, it has an adjustable sight. So you basically, we have range finders. So you pull up your range finder, you click it on the target, and it'll tell you how many yards it is, and it compensates cool. angle. And then you adjust the dial to to what it is and pull and the trigger. Uh, I know? like that. I'm I mean, there's a that. lot more that goes into it than just that. But but yeah, some of the, I mean, it's crazy the the engineering that's behind some of that. Yeah, right. And the speed and how fast it is and. I remember the first time I pulled one back too on a compound bow. I was like, "Damn, that's pretty crazy!" Like, you don't like it. I mean, it's hard to pull back. Right, you got to pull that string back. But once it's there and it locks, at first, if you could as soon hold as it, you get over that cam. It's yeah, like it's pretty nuts. nothing, right? Like an eighty percent let off. Yeah, or that something. surprised me. Yeah, there's yeah. like not much tension on it. And then I was like, "Damn, this thing really shoots out that fast!" And the boom, boom, <laughs> holy shit, it does. Yeah, yeah, Mark. Montoya is a big bow hunter, man. We yeah, that's he mostly does. when he comes in, that's what we talk about. As bow hunting, like we don't even really get into the <laughs> fighting all that much. Like I think the last time he was in, we just talked hunting the whole time. Dude. Oh, dude. nice. That guy is such a savage. I love that dude. Yeah, he's the one that helped me uh, do the steps to get my hunting license. Nice. Yeah, so, it's. Uh, uh, I just got my fishing license too because I'm like super outdoorsy, so I'm like solely into that. I just yeah. bought a bunch of hiking gear and shit, so I could like live in the i could live in the woods for a week if i wanted to right That's now because i have man. all my shit ready to go it's uh, there's something about connecting with nature yeah for sure right and uh i think living in a spot like this there's so many places to fucking do it yeah and i love that and because... we have so much public land like yeah california is a great spot for that too if you live yeah you gotta drive to some mountains like, like, There's not very many mountains. Yeah, from... Uh, I think we got Whitney's, like, the biggest mountain. That you from Lancaster, to. I mean, you could be 
in Mammoth at like what three hours something yeah like that? three four hours that's fucking incredible yeah that there. wasn't too bad and yeah. Mammoth's beautiful too and that's like awesome snow because yeah. other than that we have mountain high and mountain high is like that shitty ass man-made right. snow where they're just squirting water in there and hope it freezes you know <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that shit that just ices over as soon as it touches the ground right yeah oh. colorado is another level how are you like in uh training at factory x i mean that's a huge community down there and yeah we love all the dudes that have come in i mean that's how you and i've made this connection yeah i really love it man like it I, it just feels like home to me. It's really weird. I can't really explain it besides that. Like, it's really tough, right? The guys are really gritty. It, it's a hard practice. Um, everything's organized and, and we just get after it, but I absolutely love it. I love the culture. I love the mentality of most of the guys. Um, I fit in really well with a lot of the guys, right? We all have the same mentality. We're all like really cool dudes, right? Like we're all killers, but we're all really cool fucking dudes. I, I like to I just love dudes hang like out and do what we want to do. Dustin Jacoby's you know I mean? been in a couple times. Yeah, love especially that guy, Dustin. Man. Really He's laid back. Another savage. Yeah, and so you we know, just, it's like, man, it's just, I don't know. It's kind of just one of those situations where you just bring all these amazing people in one spot and it just works. You know what I mean? It's almost like the 90s bulls team and shit right yeah. like it just it just works it's out a little family down there, yeah it's it a family like it. it's really nice and, and, Mark and they've even really adopted me into it you know with like the coin and just d d different stuff like that just from yeah. uh, having guys on it. i don't even train down there yeah know, there's like, no like, there's no uh there's no loss of love no matter who you are you know what i, I mean know. that's what yeah. i really loved about it too and uh i just enjoyed that it, it just like i said it feels like home and i really loved it because in my the last few years of my fighting haven't felt like that i've been uh, just roguing and going to gym to gym right and kind of just doing what i had to do to train you, and survive you've been in the ufc for a minute right like in a, yeah since 2012 since i was on the ultimate fighter wow so 10 years 10 years yeah 10 years and then uh <clears throat> i was i started so i started off training at big john's Okay. Damn, I didn't finish telling my story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, shit, where we're was fucking I? two hours in right I now, know, too, shit. almost. Um, oh, okay. So, I left that gym. I wasn't training. Uh -huh. My boys hit me up. They're like, What are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm just fucking lifting. You know what I mean? I'm getting jacked again. Fuck this. And they're like, Oh, you should come train with us. We're training at Moore Park College. We got wrestling match. Bjorn used to wrestle here. So, he knows the coach. Coach said, Yeah, you guys come here and train. So, I'm like, Fuck it. Let's do it. I went there for a couple weeks, started training. And then I was like, Like anyone else, I was like, This is kind of, I'm wasting my time. I want to fight. I want to beat the fuck out of people. But this, what we're doing right now is just training with each other. We're just beating each other up. I want to like compete. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to be better than everybody. I want to make sure that this is something that I'm good at, that, uh, I love fighting and I just want to make sure it's something that I, that I'm actually good at and not something that people are sandbagging me or, or blowing smoke on my ass about that I'm good at. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I beat up a lot of people and I know I'm naturally pretty good at fighting, but am I really good against actual fighters? It was what I wanted to know uh, personally for myself. And so uh, I, I kind of quit. I was like, fuck it, I'm done. A week later, they hit me up again. They're like, hey, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm fucking at the gym lifting. Uh, I'm just not working this week. What do you guys do when you want to train? They're like, oh yeah, Big John's having fight team tryouts. You should come try out. So I was like, oh shit, really? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, I don't know, man. I haven't trained in like a couple weeks. I barely trained with you. I've been training like two months. Like I'm Big John's not going to fucking take me on his fight team, bro. <laughs> so he goes, well, you should try out anyway we think you're pretty good and we think i think you'll fucking make it i was like okay fuck it so uh marco gives me the directions which were shitty fucking directions i missed the first tryout uh i show up late um i walk in big john's right there at the door which he's a gigantic fucking person right super cool like just amazing bear of a guy um What's up, Big John? My name's Vince. I came for the tryouts. Oh, sorry, you missed it. We have tryouts a couple weeks. Don't worry about it, though. You can just come in a couple weeks, try out. Brian's our guy. Go talk to Brian. He'll get you squared away. Cool. I go in the gym. I talk to Brian. Tryouts are going on. The guys are fighting, doing their thing, right? Uh, Brian's like, hey, uh, what's up? I'm like, what's up, man? My name's Vince. Uh, sorry I'm late for the tryout. I missed it. I still want to try out. Big John told me to go in two weeks. I'm going to come back in two weeks. I'm going to try out. Okay, cool, sweet. Uh, yeah, we got this paperwork. Here you go. Uh, fill this out, come back in a couple weeks, and uh, we'll see what you got. And I'm like, cool, sweet. I was like, you mind if I stay and watch? He's like, no, not at all. I was like, cool. So I'm sitting there watching. And he, you know, we're kind of just small talking as we're as I'm watching. And he goes, so how long have you been training for? And I was like, oh, I've been like two months. I would say like two months solid, you know, of days. He's like, oh, you've been training for this for two months? I was like, no, nah, I've been training for two months. And then he's like, oh. He's like, okay. And kind of like rolled his eyes and was like, you have to fill that paperwork out. I'll see you in a couple weeks. And then just walked off. And then I was like, oh, yeah, motherfucker, dude. I know exactly what you just fucking said to me, you piece yeah. of shit. And I'm like, okay, 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 whatever. I watched the tryouts. 
I leave with my boys who were there, uh, who who actually Brian knew because Brian knew. I don't know how he knew the dude Bjorn. I think they trained together or something prior in wrestling. But uh, so I leave with them. I come back. I try out. Um, this is what the tryouts were. First thing, I had to do a kickboxing round. Uh, I had to go against some Taekwondo black belt. The dude was kicking the fucking shit out of me every which way he possibly <laughs> could. I got pissed through the the hardest overhand right I could, floored the dude. Hector Pena, who was watching at one time, who was a world champion kickboxer, yeah. like, you know, multiple time, comes in. Okay, that's it. The guy, his name was Gavin, and gets up. He's like, oh, no, I'm good. Let's let's go again. He's like, okay, let's go again. We go again. Same shit happens. I'm getting the shit kicked out of me again, right? He's kicking me every which fucking way. I throw another overhand. Or no, I fake the overhand, throw a left hook. Boom, drop him. He goes down. I'm like, yeah, what's up? Hector's like, okay, I've seen enough. Uh, we do a wrestling round. I get taken down, but I take the guy down too. We both suck at wrestling. I do jits round. And the Jits run was a win to me because I didn't get subbed. I didn't get subbed, but I got my ass kicked the whole time, right? But I didn't get <laughs> subbed, so that was a win for me. And then we did like a workout, which the workout consisted of push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, jumping over. Oh, shit. Did I turn jumping over some tie oh, pads. I think we're all right. Yeah, yeah we're okay. <laughs> jumping over some tie pads. Uh, just stupid shit like that, right? And then uh, Brian Big John had a speech afterwards. They were like, okay, we're going to make cuts. We're yes and no, and we'll let you know over the weekend. Uh, training starts Monday. I was like, fuck yeah. At the time, I was working as an electrician. Um, I was driving, like I said, to Bakersfield and back. And then uh, I was like, cool. So I tried out with my buddy Sal, who I lived with. Um, prior to this, I was actually homeless. And my buddy Sal's mom took me in. They let me, she let me live with them. So I lived really? with them. And I was living like on a couch. And so uh, I was living with them at the time. And uh, my buddy Sal tried out with me. And Just we, didn't, wasn't making enough money I know I was, was I got like, I got kicked out when I was 17 my mom kicked me out when I was 17 because I was uh, uh I was a I was kind of a piece of shit like I did a lot of drugs and stuff and I was throwing parties at the house and I don't need, I don't really even know what happened but I threw a fucking party one day and I just I I woke up in jail and so when I came back home the doors were locked my mom's like you're fucking gone right and I was 17 so I was like what am I gonna do she's like I don't give a fuck you, you can't go home but you can't stay here so figure it out right and so I was on the street for I don't know how long. Um, I got arrested again. I don't remember what I got arrested for. And then my buddy Mike and his mom picked me up, who was my buddy Sal's mom. Um, Sal was my age. Mike was his younger brother. But I hung out with Mike more because we were always, like, smoking weed, doing shit, where Sal was more responsible. He was in a band and stuff, so he was kind of, like, already getting his shit together, right? And so uh, they picked me up from jail. <laughs> Mom's like, where do you want to go? And I was like, just drop me off wherever. <laughs> like, just drop me off right here. And she's like, we're in fucking Ventura. You live in see me. And I was like, I don't have a house. Yeah, I, I told her. She's like, oh, you can live with us. I was like, cool. So I was living with them at the time. Sal tried out with me. Sal got a call on Friday. Um, told them, Brian told them, you didn't make the fight team, but you showed a lot of potential. Come train. We'll give you a discounted rate. And then if you get better, show potential, we'll take you on the team. So I was like, fuck yeah. He was so still. Came up to me. Did you get a call? Did you get a call? I was like, no, I didn't get a call. He's like, ah, they're not going to fucking call your bitch ass. That's why, motherfucker. Like, you suck, yada, yada. Right? So I'm like, oh, fuck, you man. Shit, huh? Yeah, right? So I'm like a little heartbroken there, like all sad, like a little pouty, little sad panda. And then uh, I didn't get a call Friday or Saturday. Sunday, I get a call. Sunday night, I got a call at like, I remember it was like 6.30. I'm sitting at the computer and I was, I don't even want to say what I was doing. I was sitting at the computer. Uh, I wasn't watching porn. <laughs> I wasn't watching porn. Was but porn I wasn't, around back then? <laughs> I don't know. I oh, think yeah. so. I probably was. But I wasn't watching porn, but I was definitely doing legal shit on the computer that I shouldn't have been doing. But uh, I uh, I got a call from Brian. Brian calls me. He goes, hey, what's up? Uh, this is Brian from the fight team, Big John's. Uh, you want the good news or the bad news? And I was like, shit, uh, give me the bad news and let's end on a good note, you know? <laughs> He's like, all right. He's like, well, bad news is uh, you don't have any training. You have no formal experience in fighting. You have no baseline. You have no, you have nothing to start from. You're basically like an open book, right? We don't know if you're going to be able to take to this. We don't know if you're going to pick it up. We just don't know about you. He's like, we put you in the maybe pile. Um, you're a big risk. There's so many other people who have years of experience. You know what I mean? Why'd you try out? And so, like, I we talked to him for a minute, and I was like, "Look, I just want to be a fighter. Like, I just want to test it and see." You know what I mean? My buddies told me it was a good opportunity to try out. I like fighting. You know what I mean? Like, 
it, it was something that I've always had in life that helped me get rid of my anger that I had, right? So I just like fight I want to try out, you know what I mean? And we talk, and he's like, okay. And I was like, okay, well, what's the good news then? He's like, well, the good news is, is that you don't have any fucking training, and you're basically an open book, so you don't have any bad habits. You don't have any... Right. You haven't been trained in any particular way, so there's really... Nobody else had really sculpted or yeah, tried to mold you. We don't something. have to detrain anything out of you to train you to become a good fighter. So that's that's actually pretty good. And they're like, and you showed a lot of conditioning. You're tough as shit. You fucking knocked out. You knocked Gavin down twice. <laughs> you didn't get submitted. And in the wrestling, you didn't do too well, but you didn't get your ass kicked really either. So we decided that we were going to take you out of the maybe pile and we put you in the yes pile. Congratulations, you made the fight team. And I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah, man. where's my buddy at? Yeah, I got so excited. I'm like, Sal. He's like, Sal. what? I was like, me the fight team, bitch. I threw my fucking phone at Sal. I missed, broke my fucking phone. Uh, Brian's still on the phone. <laughs> so I figured the phone, it still works, right? I was an old, uh, not even a flip phone. Nokia. It was a, yeah, it was a Nokia. It was a Nokia. No, no, no. Right. It was a, no, it wasn't a Nokia. It was after Nokia's. It was a Samsung. <laughs> And it was like an old black and white one that was like just a brick, right? Yeah, but yeah. that phone was badass. And I remember that phone like it, like I remember that phone. That was my favorite phone still to this day because I could be in my car blasting you know, like Pennywise or whatever as loud as I possibly could and yeah. still have full-blown conversation on my phone with that thing. <laughs> with my iPhone? <laughs> Fuck no, yeah, bro. No, if someone's can't. farting next to me, I can't hear shit on that yeah, thing, dude. No. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. And so, uh, yeah, and so I talk shit to about- Sal. 15 times as much probably. Yeah, yeah. stupid Fucking amounts. Oh my God, I just had to buy this piece of shit because I smashed my <laughs> other one. But uh, so I talk shit to Sal. I'm like, I made the fight team. What's up? You fucking suck. And then, uh, damn, I made the fight team. I was there. I got my ass kicked for like, I don't know, eight months to a year of my first year of training. So it could have totally, your story could have totally went the other way. You could have been. Pulling yeah. wire through walls, man. For yeah, and to this day I still do. Right, long. like I'm a journeyman yeah. electrician now, so I continued that so in my that's schooling. That's a fucking great that. backup career, man. Holy yeah, so shit, when I'm done right? fighting, that's probably what I'm gonna do, right? Just on mm-hmm. my own, so I don't have to make some other asshole rich. But I was super stoked, and uh, I got my ass kicked for a long time because there were so many guys who were like blue and purple belts still you know, at the time when I first joined. But then I noticed after that, like ten month to a year mark. uh the dudes who were kicking my ass and showing me stuff, I was kicking their ass and showing them things. And then that's when I noticed I had a big acceleration in my skills. I went from, I got my blue belt in six months, six or eight months after that, after my first year. So I think like a year and a half, I got my blue belt. And then in two years or three years, my buddy or my coach Brian gave me my purple belt. And then I stayed a purple belt for a few years, got my brown, and then eventually got my black after I beat Miller. But, uh, that was how I got started, but it all started with that guy, Mark Smith, and it's kind of crazy, and, and this is like a really another part of that weird coincidental story that I told you mm-hmm. is Mark Smith actually passed away. Um, I got into fighting. I got in the UFC, and I was trying to get a hold of him one day because he had moved to Hawaii, back to Hawaii, and I was trying to get a hold of him so I could thank him, right, and be like, thank you because you are the reason why I'm in the UFC. Like, you put, you showed me where to step the first time, right? Like, you showed me the path to walk, and here I am. So I wanted to thank him, but, uh, Mark actually ended up passing away from a heart attack and I never got that chance. And so when I made it in the UFC, uh, (laughs) I, I very soon realized I lost my first fight in the UFC and I very soon realized that, uh, $8,000 isn't enough money in California to live very long. And so I had to go back to work and, uh, I got a job at AAA and I was selling and installing batteries. So people would call and broken down, my car won't start. I would drive there with a van, test their battery. If it was bad, I'd sell them one. I'd install it, send them on their way, right? Um, one day I get a call, and it's this lady. Her name's Patricia Smith. I get the call, and I'm wearing my metal militia hat. And uh, I'm working on it. I'm like, oh, yeah, cut your battery's shot. Yeah, you need a new one, this and that. And we're talking. I'm giving her my, my salesman spiel, right? And then uh, she goes, oh, you – that's a pretty cool hat. She's like, my my son used to train those boys, the Mud Militia boys. And I'm like, your son? And then I'm like, your last name is Smith. And then I'm like, who's your son? And she's like, oh, Mark. She's like, maybe you know him. I was like, Mark the Bear Smith? And she's like, yeah, that's my son. And she walks inside and comes out and brings out this collage that the Militia boys made for her of him. And it was photos of him and them and really? all this, you know what I mean, memories and stuff. And so like, 
like I'm shaking right now. Immediately I was like, fuck, this is crazy. It's how full is, circle, huh? Man? Yeah, it's how is wild. this how is this happening right now, right? This is really cool. So I was like, fuck man. I was like, you know what? I was like, let me give you a big old hug, right? And and it's really weird because when I ran into her it was literally the week after I had tried to get a hold of Mark and found out that he had passed away. Because really? I didn't I didn't know because I didn't have really contact with him. Like I was just friends with him because he was friends with uh, my girlfriend at the time's dad and we broke up uh-huh. like that whole that whole bond like cut right like i didn't really talk to him like i talked to him before and so uh i just i got really emotional right and i gave her a big old hug and i was like thank you and she's like what and i was like i'm like you don't know this but your buddy your your son mark he is the reason why i'm a fighter and i explained her and i show her our stuff and she's like oh wow she's like you really like it's really good you, you made it you know what i mean and i was like yeah and i was like but your son is the reason why i did like he's the one that brought me there and so like, thank you. You know what I mean? Like, I want to wow. thank you. And I bought her battery. I put it in for her and I gave her my number and I was like, you've ever fucking issue. You call me, fuck triple A. You call me. How trippy is right? that, man? It's yeah, so, so weird. Those connections that happen to you in life yeah. like that. Like, and that's not even the only one. So even before that, before I got in the UFC, I almost quit fighting in 2011. Um, during summer, I was sick of it. I was, I was fighting people and I was getting paid, you know, a couple thousand dollars here and there to fight. I was working and training to fight. I was sacrificing so much of my time, my money, my body. I was I was starting to be unhappy. I, I lost a relationship, right, over it. I, I was very, I was in like kind of a limbo part of my life with fighting. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then uh, I was like, fuck, tell him Big John. I was like, hey, Big John, uh, and my coach Brian, I was like, you guys need to get me in like a fight. I want to fight in WEC at the time or Strike Force. Bellator is just coming around. Give me something like that. I know the OC is not going to fucking just take me in. So let's give me something. I want to make sure I'm a good fighter and I'm not just here beating up on tomato cans. Cause I was like, I was seven to know at the time I'm defeated, right? Or three, no, whatever, four, no. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, they're like, okay, cool. Big John came back at me with a, with an offer from Bellator and they wanted me to f- sign like a, dude, it was like a five year, five fight deal, something stupid like that. And John's like, really? yeah. And I was, I was kind of like, yeah, let's fucking do it. Bellator. Like right. that's on TV. You are like, I'll be on TV fighting people. Like, <laughs> let's fucking do it. And John's like, I don't really like it because it's five years. He's like, you're trapped in that contract. He's like, imagine if the ultimate fighter comes around and we stick you in there. He's that's like, such a long time of your career. Yeah, he's like, man. you can't, then you can't do the ultimate fight. I was like, the Fuck. careers are not nearly, yeah. I mean, it's kind of unheard of to have a 10 year career. Honestly. It really is. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm a really rare bird, aren't I? <laughs> and so me and John decided ultimately to, to say no to that contract. And, and we did. And then I got an offer in pride to fight Maximo Blanco, which I almost took that too. And then, uh, John was like, no, nah, let's not take that after all, because it's in Japan. And he's like, hey, he's like, it's not that I don't trust that you can't beat this guy. He's like, I just don't trust the Yakuza. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> and uh he's like yeah he's like when we go out there he's like i mean he's like, i can't promise you anything he's like, i can't promise anything and i was like what do you mean john he's like, i don't know he's like you go out there and you'll fight he's like but you're gonna fight maximo blanco who's most likely on steroids who they're probably feeding steroids to you're just kind of a piece of meat that they want him to to chew on next um they might not pay you they're probably gonna fuck with you male nourish you before it He's like, I don't think it's really a good decision to do that. Wow. And I was like, shit, really? And John's like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, fuck that. Well, thank that. God, man, you had people like that looking out for you a little yeah. bit. Because I think that the first knee-jerk reaction is to make, when you're trying to make it right, is to take, like, oh, that's a big deal. I'm yeah, going to be on TV. I'm, I'm going to be, yeah. Fuck the safety lines. Let right. me just jump. And so I was like, I was going to jump on that too. And then ultimately he said no. And so I was like, fuck, we're saying no to my opportunities that I want to take that I'm feeling like are going to propel me. Right. So I don't know. One day we we're partying in my house and uh, I was with my buddy Curtis, uh, my girlfriend, a couple other friends, we were partying. And, and then uh, I was telling him, I was like, Hey, I think I'm going to quit fighting, dude. Like this is fucking stupid. And I'm explaining all the shit. Right. And then I'm explaining these things and you know, my girlfriend's there at the time and we're a serious relationship, right? And I was like, I don't want to lose her too. You know what I mean? Like it was just, I, I saw my future like falling apart like it did already and I don't want that to happen again. So I was like, I'm just going to, you know, part my ways and just move on. I can make a lot of money right now. So, you know what I mean? Money's the root of all evil, but it also rules the world. So I got to do what I got to do. And he's like, you know what? Don't be a fucking pussy. <laughs> this, these, these are the kind of friends that I absolutely love in my life. But he's like, don't be a fucking pussy. He's like, I know you're feeling like really shitty about it in some sort of way. He's like, but just fight out the rest of the year. He's like, promise me you at least fight out the rest of the year. 
if it doesn't work out or you don't get an opportunity or something doesn't fall in your lap, he's like, then, then fuck it, dude. At least you, you know what I mean? At least you say you tried and, and you did what you did. He's like, but at least give it up the rest of the year. You can't just quit halfway through the year. You know what I mean? Like you just fall, you just start some dude. So just, you know what I mean? So I was like, you know what? You're right. I am just kind of being a pussy. I'm a little emotional, right? I'm a little fucked up. Fuck it. I'm just going to fight the rest of the year. Fuck this shit. Let's do it. So uh, I'm fighting. I think I fought one more time that year. And then later that, that same year, my buddy Curtis uh, passed away. Um, I, I found him uh, passed away in his, in his house. He was in a train accident in Chatsworth. And he was one of the uh, top like 3% of people who got severely injured that survived in that crash. Uh, oh, he, the crane rush, the crane, the train crash is pretty nuts. So, so it was like an Amtrak, one yeah, of those Amtrak, a speeding ones? Amtrak crash. Yeah, two Fuck speeding Amtraks that. head-on collision, and he was in the the car. Oh shit, I remember that. That was <clears throat> it was in Chatsworth, like maybe ten years ago, something like that. And so, uh, yeah, I think it was like 2010, 2009, something right. like that, right around that time. And he was really fucked up. He was in the hospital for months, and uh, he ended up getting uh, a settlement. He got like a couple million dollars, a few million dollars for it. He was fucked up for life, though. Like, his back was fused. He was on pain meds the rest of his life. Um, he was a very active guy, right? Very active. He was the guy that I was always skating and bike riding and doing shit with. So um, he uh, asphyxiated. He was on his pain meds. We were bowling the night before. He went home, took his pain meds, fell asleep. He had to sleep on his back. Right, and so he just he suffocated and died. He choked on his own throat, basically. Damn. So I was working for AAA. I went to work the next morning. I told him the night before, I was like, I'm gonna bust your fucking door down like 6 a.m. when I start work, and we're we're gonna start our day. And he's like, Fuck, you don't even show up at my house. So I show up at his house, of course, at like 6:30. His garage door is wide open, and he's got like motocross on the TV, loud as fuck. And there's just like he's got speakers all through his house, surround sound, and it's mm -hmm. on his surround sound. So I'm like, There's no one fucking sleeping here. There's no way. So I'm sitting in there and I'm eating breakfast, right? Waiting for a call because I'm on call for AAA. And then his cousin Brian comes home. His Brian goes, hey, where's Curtis at? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I just got here. I figured you fucking guys were up here doing something. This shit's so loud. He's like, I know, turn that down. So I turned it down. I leave. I get a call. I come back around lunchtime. It's like noon or 11. No one's there. The garage is still open. TV's exactly where it was. And I'm like, this is like, I just, I felt really weird. I don't, I don't, can't explain it, but I just felt like, something up, was right? yeah you know what i mean you ever been like that's six cents kind of yeah, yeah my 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 hair stood up you know what i mean and i'm like what the fuck so i i immediately i went to his room and it's all dark in there and i see him in bed and i'm like curtis curtis wake the fuck up i walk over there i open a sliding glass door at the blinds and i see him and i'm like he he's dead i know he's dead he's not the first person i've seen dead in my life um i turn his head uh, cold shit comes out of his mouth right to throw up and shit I'm like he's gone I call 911 tell them come get him whatever call the family let them know what happened um, that whole process goes through I don't I don't go to the gym this happens I found him uh, November 22nd the day before my birthday was the day that I found and him and this is dead. the friend that was just telling you not to quit right that I was just talking to that told me not to quit he was actually a huge part of my life he was uh I don't want to say this because it sounds bad on my brother, but I absolutely love my brother. He's my brother, and I wouldn't trade him for anything. But Curtis is like another brother that I that I never had, right? He's like the yeah. brother I never had, and so uh, I got some friends like that too, man. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you just meet people in your life that just have such just an make effect a connection. On you. Yeah, you have that camaraderie. You can give each other shit. You're yeah, looking out for each other. No like, bond. Nothing can break that bond, yeah. right? Like that rubber band will never be broken. He yeah. was that guy for me. So and you can get in a bit more trouble with him, right? Because yeah, exactly. Not that family element. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're willing to risk yeah. a little more. <laughs> And so, so that happened right now. I was super emotional. I didn't, I didn't train. I didn't go to, to the gym for a few weeks. And then, uh, I went to the gym, I think December, right before Christmas, I was like, just feeling, just feeling it one day. And I was like, I'm gonna go to the gym and train. You know, I train, get my emotions out. I'm going to leave the gym and my coach, Brian stops me and he's like, Hey, I got some good news for you. And I'm like, Oh, what's up? He's like, ultimate fires coming around. He's like, and you're trying out. Oh shit. Yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, Brian. You know, if you're if you're like fucking with me right now, I'm just not in the mood, and I'm I'm gonna punch you in the fucking throat, dude. Like, um, if you're if you're fucking with me right now, Brian, we're fighting right now. Like, I'm <laughs> I'm not kidding, dude. I'm not in the mood for any kind of shit like this. And he pulls out behind him the application he already had printed, which was thick as fuck that I still have. It's probably about an inch thick. Um, here's the application. Fill this out. We need to make you a highlight DVD. What season was that? 
Uh, it was season 15, the live okay. one. The only live one that they did. The only live season they did. Really? Yeah. Normally, the season's only six weeks. The guys fight every other day. Ours was three months. Who were the coaches on that? Because that's how I recognize. Dominic Cruz and Uriah Faber. Okay. Yep. And so uh, I was, <laughs> so before I actually got on that. So, okay. So he says that, right? I get the application and, and I just, I start crying, right? I get emotional and I'm like, this is Curtis telling me not to be a pussy in the last week of the year. Um, right. And this is strange a strange coincidence. This is right? t- yeah. very too coincidental. And this is why. The Ultimate Fighter has a certain pattern in the way they do the show. They go, you know, lightest to, they go super light, super heavy, you know, not so light to not so heavy and so on and so forth. So they shrink down. It's usually welterweight and middleweights right. together or light and welterweights together. And it used to be one season a year. And now I think they're doing a bit more, but yeah. And, and then so, it stopped for a while too, right? They yeah. Just... They shut it down and they started the contender series. Right. Which, cause they realized contender series cost them less money. Yeah. But it's, not as entertaining to it's watch. It's really not. Right? Yeah, it's not, it's not like the Kardashians, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> and so, uh, fuck, yeah. I just threw you I, off. I there, tried didn't out. I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He told me we're gonna try out. I'm like, this is Curtis. The last week of the year, telling me not to be a fucking pussy, and I could just. At that moment, I heard his voice so loud in my head that I couldn't hear anybody. It was like he was screaming in my fucking ear, "Fill that fucking thing out, pussy." So I fill it out. I try out. The trials were fucking nuts. Uh, I showed up in Vegas, the Palace Station, and there was... So do you try out before you actually get... Yes, you have to okay. try out. There's a process. Sure. And the process was this. Is it hundreds of dudes, or is it like... There was almost... I think there was like a 800 and something, almost 900 Holy people trying shit. out for the season that I tried out for. And so oh, the line... I have a picture of the line. It was in one of their big ballrooms, and the line coiled in the room. It started in the center of the room. It coiled around the room. And it went out and down the fucking hallway and out the goddamn building. So are you getting in the ring with guys or what is the tryout? Is it conditioning? Or so this, is it- there, there's multiple things. So uh, first of all, I got there at like 7 a.m. And I didn't get pulled in until 6.30 p.m. in my group. They were pulling us in groups of 40, I think. Uh, we pull us in there. The first thing you do is you grapple with somebody live. <laughs> Joseph was in there. Uh, Reed Harris. Um uh, who else was in there? There was a couple other people in there. A couple other suits. We roll somebody. They give you minor rules. No heel hooks. Nothing that's going to potentially put somebody out. Uh, you roll for 90 seconds and they make cuts. I rolled with this guy. He uh, guillotined me. I shot in. Fuck it. I'm going to shoot in. He guillotines me. I tap. I get pissed. He plays possum the whole time and like, oh, I got you. You're not going to give me back. Right. And so I jump for a heel hook and I grab him, but I don't crank it. I just grab him and I got him. I'm going to both the time. I'm like, fuck this guy. I grab him, right? Okay, cool. We're done. Round's over. I come back. My coach, Brian's like, you're a fucking asshole. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he goes, he goes uh, Joe Silva said no heel hooks or none of that shit. And you, f- the first thing you fucking do is jump for a goddamn heel hook. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but I just held it. I didn't like grab it. And I was like, I didn't yeah. hear him say that, honestly. Like I, I really didn't, didn't snap hear him his say ankle. It. Yeah, yeah. I was like, he's fine. He's walked away. I was like, fuck that guy, he guillotined me. I got him back. And so he made cuts. I made the cut. I tried out with another teammate, uh, Dave Weber at the time. Um, the next one was uh, pads. Coach Brian pulls up the pads. We're hitting pads. I'm just hammering these fucking things. Wah, 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 wah. Just being loud, having a good time. I'm starting to get tired. When is this motherfucker going to tell me I'm done hitting pads? <laughs> <laughs> so they want to see the guys go for a minute, huh? Shit. Yeah, I was hit. I was, oh man, I don't know how hard I was hitting this pad. I was hitting this pad as hard as I can for as long as I could. And it seemed like a half a fucking hour, but it was probably literally 30 seconds, right? <laughs> and I'm smashing this pad. And then eventually, finally, Silva goes, All right, Vince, we've seen enough. You can sit down now. And then, I was like, oh, he's talking to me. I was like, that motherfucker just called me Vince. I was like, I think that's good. Is that good, Brian? Yeah, we were in the back. I was like, is that good? He knows my name. He knows me. Oh. Right? And so they make cuts. I make the cut. My buddy Dave gets cut right there. The third thing we have to do is the face-to-face interview with the with the producers. And so I'm like, shit. Now I have to. I'm like, okay, I got to. I gotta be, I gotta be me. I gotta be cool. I gotta be a little douchey in there. They want some douchey people, you know. Right. I gotta be, I gotta be stern though. I gotta be like strong. Gotta let them know I'm playful. You know what I mean? I'm like, all this shit's going through my head. I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna do? 
We're sitting on a bench like it's prison. We're waiting to just get mugshotted. Uh, I go in there and there's an oval desk that's the long ways right in the room and I'm on this side of it and it's Craig Plesian, Jamie, uh, another um, Gary, another all the lead producers, a couple other people and then there's like, I don't know how many fucking cameras, dude, like 10 cameras, three big ones, little ones all over the walls, there's on the desk, they're like up my nose and shit, it's fucking weird, right? I feel like I'm getting prodded by aliens kind of. Right. And so uh, the guy Craig, he goes, hey, what's up? Uh, he's like, Vink, your name Vink? I was like, oh, no, it's Vince. I just spell like I just that. Spell different. Yeah, yeah, I just spell like that. And he's like, that's kind of weird. And I was like, yeah, tomato, tomato. You know, you probably spell your name weird to other people. It's what it is. He's like, why are you spelled that way? And I'm like, okay, let me explain. When I was younger, my mom used to call me Vincey. My full name is Vincent. So, like, so anyone mm -hmm. knows that. My full name is Vincent. That's my full name. But uh, my mom used to call me Vincey when I was a kid, right? And so when I was learning to write my name, I thought Vince with the E was Vincey. So I took the E off Vince. So that's why I spell my name the way I do. That's the only reason. And so when I was in school, teachers were like, that's not how you spell Vince. Vince is with the E. And I'm like, fuck off. It's my name. Spell it how you want. That's my name. <laughs> I love it. Right? That's and so funny. I've always spelled it like that's that. That's how it sounds. Yeah, right? like, yeah. yeah. How, and that yeah. was the logic in my head at the time. And it's yeah. funny to this day. Like, I still think that way about things, right? Like, I still yeah. have that weird logic in me, I which has probably kept me as weird as I am. But <laughs> And so uh, I'm sitting in there, and he goes, oh, okay, that's, that's cool. He's like, oh, and you're born in Lancaster. You lived in Canoga Park, you in Simi Valley, and now you're in Sherman Oaks. He's like, one shit hold to the next, huh? And I was like, yeah, basically. And then he's like, he's like, how you like Sherman Oaks? I'm like, oh, it's okay, but there's a lot of fucking weirdos out there. And he's like, weirdos? What do you mean? And I was like, I was like, well, I don't sound racist or anything, but Armenians, man. Like, there's a lot of Armenians out there, and they're just, they're fucking weirdos. And like, I like I have friends that are Armenian, but they're just, they're just weird to me sometimes. And then he's like, really? He like, gives me this look. And then I'm like, let me explain. He's Armenian. <laughs> I'm like, let me explain so there's this there, i live in this building and it's 90 percent armenians and uh there's me my super pasty white ass girlfriend and like you know some other rare, random people in there and there's this one dude who i who i always talk to um thickest eyebrows i ever fucking see in my life smells like cool track cologne right gold everywhere <laughs> to the fucking t right hair is coming out of his out of his fucking shirt and uh, I always talked to him. He's a super cool dude. His name was, uh, I don't even remember his name. I don't know if his name was like Ramsey or something. But uh, we'd always talk. And one day uh, we got in the elevator and it was him. It was, I was in the elevator and, it, and then he came in with his wife or his girlfriend, whoever. And then they have a little son. And so uh, I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? Hey, what's up? How you doing? You know, talk to him. And then he doesn't say shit to me. He just looks at me. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, I'm high. Maybe I just was said that kind of quiet or slurred or something and i'm like hey what's up dude <laughs> how you doing today <laughs> and then he starts speaking to me but he's speaking to me in uh like arab right or uh i don't know what he speaks right i don't know what the the name of the language is but yeah. so i'm like oh what the fuck i'm like do you do you forget english or something like what the fuck dude and i was like i was like well whatever dude i guess you can't pretend like you know english because your girlfriend's here i was like whatever so i kind of gotten like an argument with him but i was just arguing with myself with him you know what i mean like because he wasn't talking back to me at this point and so I tell him that, and I'm like, yeah, it was just a fucking weird thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I'm friends with Carl Parisian, too, and, like, I love you people, but you're just too proud sometimes of your own, for your own good. You know what yeah. I mean? And then that's when he goes, you know I'm Armenian, right? And then I was like, <laughs> fuck. And then I'm like, damn, I fucked up. And then I look over, and both the other producers are like, like, dude, this guy's fucking dead in the water now. Right? And I'm like, shit. So I'm sitting there, and then he goes, uh, Craig goes, oh, you know, uh, oh, he's, he goes, Michelle, huh? He's like, what? What is that? I was like, well, the last name's actually French. I was like, but I'm Dutch, Italian. And he's like, oh, he's like, anyone to tell you ever, anyone, anyone ever tell you you look, uh, you know, Hispanic? And he like says it in a, you know, in a way like Hispanic, you know what I mean? And then I, I start like, I kind of chuckle and I was like, are you trying to like talk shit to me, dude? Is that how you talk shit? Because you need to do a little better. That was garbage, you know? <laughs> and then the other two producers start like chuckling, right? And he gets mad. He says something else. And then I answer him with some smart ass comment. And then he goes, all right, I think I've seen enough. You get the fuck out of here now. And I was like, oh, interview's over. He's like, interview's over. And I was like, see you later, yeah. right? And I salute him and I fucking walk off. And as I walk outside, I immediately want to just kick myself in the dick, right? I want to yeah, just, I just, I want to just jump yeah. headfirst out a fucking window because I fucked up. I fucked up so bad. <laughs> How did I fuck up so bad? How? Why? You did so good. You made it here. The, the timeline of things, you know what I mean? Things that shouldn't have fell into place, fell into place. You got all the way here and you fucking did that. You stupid dumb shit. You fucking retard. What is wrong with you? You know what I mean? I'm having this conversation. 
I hear the door open. I turn around and it's uh, Gary, the other lead producer. And he's laughing his fucking balls off. And he's like, Vince. He's like, what's up, man? I was like, what's up? He's like, I was like, I fucked up. He's like, he's like, what do you mean? I was like, I, I fucked up, didn't I? I was like, I feel like that went really, really bad. You were a little too much yourself, right? Yeah, <laughs> I was too much of that asshole that I can be, you know? And then uh, he goes, he goes, no. He's like, honestly, he's like, that was the best fucking interview that we have ever seen for The Ultimate Fighter. Like, Craig's pissed off and he's a little upset, but fuck him. That was the best interview we've ever seen. We're pushing you through. Don't tell anyone, but we're pushing you through. I'm like, sick. So I go home. I'm like, tight. I'm going to get a call, and they're going to let me know when I need to come back and do the other shit, right? So I get that call. <clears throat> they're like, okay, you got to come back. Jamie's talking to me now. She's their lead producer. Jamie goes, uh, yeah, you got to fly out here. We're going to take you. In, you know, We got to do the medical stuff, photos, videos, You know, the whole nine yards because now you're going to go through the second part of the process, and if you make this, you're on the ultimate fighter. You fight to get in the house. So I was like, sick. I'm like, wait, did you say flight? She goes, yeah, we're going to fly you out here. I was like, oh, I can't go on a plane. She goes, why? I'm like, well, she's like, are you afraid of heights or flying? I was like, no, 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 no. I'm just, when I was younger, I, uh, this will tell you about how, how long this craziness has been in me. When I was younger, when I was like 15 or 16, I made a promise to myself that I would not go in a plane until it was the skydive. And so I told Jamie this. <laughs> I was like, I made a promise to myself that I can't do, I don't break my promises. I, I have to, I can't, she's, so I, I, I explained this to her, yeah. yeah, so she goes, you better fucking book it, you have three months, and so I book it, and uh, luckily, it was like right around my birthday time that I got to do it, so, because uh, I waited like, it was like almost a whole year process to get even get in this fucking place, like it was pretty nuts, the process, I didn't realize how long it took to even be on the Ultimate Fighter, and so later that year, I go skydiving, you know, I do it, I steal the video, Right, I didn't pay for it because they wanted like too much money for it. it's California. <laughs> I even have the video of the lady screaming at me, telling me I'm stealing video as I'm recording it off their TV screen. Right, I'm like, fuck you, this, this is my first time with a plane, bitch. I'm right. stealing this shit. Yeah, yeah, Call yeah. the fucking cops, see if they get here in time. Yeah. And so uh, <laughs> I do that. I fly out there to Vegas and uh, I do the medical stuff. I go to the interview. We're sequestered in a hotel room. I couldn't leave. They took my cell phone, took my wallet, took everything. Give me a bag of clothes. Tell me I can order whatever I want to eat. Just stay in the hotel room. Don't leave the hotel room where you're well, fucked. Isn't it, I mean, from there, it's only a four or five hour drive, right? Yeah, from yeah. where I was. Yeah, it's not a far <laughs> drive. Yeah, but they're like, we're going to fly you out there. Fly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I'm sequestered. I go in the interview room, the second interview, the final one. And then right before I go in, Gary's out there. And he's, he's like, he stops me. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? He's like, hey. He's like, uh, you know what to do in there, right? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I was like, I don't, honestly, I'm so fucking nervous, dude. I don't know what to do. And last time I feel like I fucked up. He told me I did good. I don't know what to do. He's like, honestly, he's like, just go in there and pretend like you don't give a fuck. He's like, go in there like you did last time. Pretend like you don't give a fuck and just, just go in there. I'm like, cool. I walk in, I sit down. This time we're at a long table and I'm at the end of the table and there's people, too many people on both sides. And then Craig Prelegian at the very end, King of the Castle, motherfucker at the yeah. end, right? First thing he says to me, he looks at me and he's like looking at me and he doesn't say shit for a minute, right? And I'm sitting there and I'm like twiddling my thumbs and I'm looking around <laughs> and I'm just sitting there. And, and then he goes, he goes, Pichel, Pichel. He goes, why do I have this feeling like I just want to say fuck you for some reason to you? And I was like, oh, I was like, because I'm that motherfucker that fucking that hates Armenians. That's why. <laughs> right. And I don't I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but I fucking said it. And everyone just starts erupting in there, right? And then Craig Pleasant is like, that's right. Get the fuck out of here. And then I sat there and I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying right fucking here. Yeah. And then he's like, okay. And then we, we talked. Me and him just talked, bullshit. And it was actually, it was so different than I was expecting it to be. It was a conversation like me and you were having, not right. like he's interviewing me. So he's asking me about my mentality, how I would react in certain situations, and you know what I mean. I'm like, oh, I'll react this way, I react that way. But honestly, like I'm a, I'm a product of my environment, so variables matter. You know what I mean. In certain situations, I'll do this. In certain situations, I'll do that. So you know what I mean. Poke me and see how I react. As as how you're gonna, you know what I mean. Is what you're gonna get out of me. And so he's like, cool. He let me know that he's like, we really like you. He's like, we're gonna take you. He's like, as long as your medicals pass, he's like, you're fighting to get on the fucking show. He's like, so be prepared to fight and get on the show. I was like, fuck yeah. I left there so just excited and just happy. Up, yeah. yeah. And then 
I was just like, man, all these things came together so crazily. And even before that, I talked to Big John about it. And Big John's like, hey, uh, you're going to be selected on Favor's team. Favor's going to pick you because I talked to him and I told him about you and he knows. So Favor's going to pick you. So don't be surprised if Favor picks you. I'm like, fuck, sweet. I like Favor. I yeah. don't like Dominic Cruz. At the time, I did not like Dominic <laughs> Cruz because uh, all I knew of him was his interviews and how he was. And I was like, this guy's a fucking douche nozzle. I do not like this guy. <laughs> like, I just thought he was so douchey, right? Um, Faber does not pick me. I'm on Dominic's team, which I kind of had a little resentment towards Faber for, but in the end, I'm like, you know what? It was probably better that way. But I remember asking Faber about it one day. We were in the house and we were all drinking. Did you get your fighter name there or did you have it prior to going? No, I had it prior actually. So I got it from my mom. Really? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a funny story. So, I mean, obviously I, I got into a lot of fights when I was young. I got arrested. I got arrested a lot for fighting. Um, I didn't tell my mom I was fighting until my first professional fight. She had no idea. I was training on my own, doing my thing on my own. I didn't live with her. Uh, admittingly, I didn't really talk to my mom a whole lot at the time because I was still a little resentful towards her for kicking me out. And like the prior years of my life were really hard on me. And I had a lot of, I had a lot of, I had a lot of baggage like towards her for that. You know what I mean? And so I didn't really talk to her too much, but when I turned pro, I went there and I, and I told her, I, I made it the point to tell her and talk to her. So I was like, hey, I'm, I'm, uh, I got a new job and I'm making money now. <laughs> uh, and uh, I just want to tell you what it is. And she's like, oh, what is it? And I was like, oh, it's fighting. And she's like, I know you fucking idiot. You got arrested. Like I got arrested a couple months prior for getting into a fight. And so uh, she's like, I know you got arrested, you know, a couple months back for it. And I was like, oh, no, I'm actually fighting like in a ring professionally. Like it's like as a sport, like I'm, like I'm sort of an athlete now, like, you know, sort of a big deal, you know? And so my mom starts laughing. I'm like, what the fuck is so funny? She goes, what's your ring name going to be? The Pichelle from hell. I immediately started laughing and then was just like, holy shit. Me and my coach Brian were thinking for the longest time of like a nickname. Cause we we're like, you gotta have a nickname, right? Like, cause you're just smashing, you're smashing these dudes. Right. Like you're going to have a nickname and it's going to be something violent because that's just the way you fight. And so I was like, sick, let's do it. And so uh, Peter Cunningham, who was my kickboxing coach, the nickname they had for me was Punisher. And it's because uh, he gave us all uh, basically superhero names, right? And depending on who we were, he would match us to the superhero that we were most That's relatable my favorite to. favorite superhero, dude. Yeah, yeah. And, and my mentality and the way that I view and, and feel about things is really relatable to him and the way he is. And so that's why I got that from him. And plus, I'm like... I'm the violent one in the gym and everybody knows it. And so like, if someone comes in the gym and is an asshole, I'm the guy that they're like, spar with this guy and we want you to <laughs> fuck him up, right? And I actually have a story about that with Big John, that Big John fed someone to me one time in the gym. But, uh, so I was that guy. <laughs> That's fucking great, man. <laughs> but I, I don't know, so he gave me that, but then my mom says that, right? So I laugh. I'm and like, that's kind of that fits really fucking well, mom. I mean, that's the way a fighter name should come to, right? Like some of these guys name themselves, and it's like, come on, bro. yeah. If, like, if it's not organic, it's it's yeah. it's like a fart you push too hard, right? Yeah. It's just <laughs> shit. That's all it is. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so my mom gave me that, and I was like stoked, right? And I and I told uh, I told my coach Brian, I told Big John, they started chuckling about it. They're like, dude, that's really fucking good, actually. They're like, the Pichelle from hell. From Hell Pichel, from Hell Vince, from Hell Pichel, and then, and then Big John got his brief buffer voice on, and he started like <laughs> saying it right around the gym, and then it just stuck, and then everyone was just like, "Vince, you little fucking demon, that's you," right. and then I was like, "Fuck, you know what? It really is. It's just I don't know. I can't really argue it. I guess <laughs> I can't really argue great, it." <laughs> Yeah, no, I can't. It fits perfect, man. It, it really your does. Your style of fighting, everything. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. What, dude? We are burning through the time. I don't want to. I take know. Up I'm sorry for taking no, your guys' time. I fucking love it, man. Uh, <laughs> if we had more time, I we'd keep going. But let's do this fucking again, man. Yeah, I'm this totally has been down. A blast, dude. I'm totally we down. Talk and that's not even half again. my story either. I know. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk for hours, but before we jump off, let's spend a little bit more time. If you if you have the time. Yeah, yeah. What do you got coming up? You got any fights lined up at the moment? Yeah, Anything? yeah. I got this fight uh, October 1st against Jesse Ronson. Jesse Ronson? Jeez, I want to feel like an asshole. Like, I don't know his name, but Jesse so you're Ronson. In camp. Yeah, I'm in camp right now, training, uh, doing that thing. Um, 
my life is hectic right now. I'm dealing with a lot of bullshit on top of this stuff too. Like I'm, I'm moving out of my place cause there's like black mold going on and they don't fix oh, it. Damn. Yeah. And then like, I got other people trying to rip me off and lawyers being scummy and shit. So it's like, I don't know. I got a lot of crazy fucking scummy people dealing, trying to dirty shit to me right now. So I'm kind of going through the ringer that way, but everything else is pretty good. People my finding's good. My training's shit. good. They really can. <laughs> yeah. And fuck man, I don't know. I just can't. I just remember a time and I just, I just cherish that time and hope that that time comes back when morals and self-responsibility becomes a thing, you know, where people yeah. just don't, where people aren't able to be bought out by, by materialistic things. I just, a lot of people don't understand the way I am because I'm that way. I don't, I can't be bought by things. Right. And so I don't know. I don't, I don't, I, I don't understand that, but I feel like that's kind of been lost it's over time. It's a good mentality to have. If you can yeah. realize that, that material shit, doesn't really matter all that much. I think yeah. you're a lot happier in life, man. Really? Because, I mean, in the end, we all lose anyway. Yeah. We all fucking die. What do you take with you? Exactly. You take the dust you came in with. Yeah, that's you, it. Yep. You can't so, take it all with you when you die. That's just the way I see it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty nuts. But, yeah, so you got your fight coming up in October. Yeah, I got the fight coming up. But that's basically it, man. I'm just training. Like, uh, nice. Just like I said, I'm gonna probably take off here, do some shooting a little bit. I need to. I just bought that rifle. I just got a 308 rifle, so I'm trying to dial cool. in that scope I put on there, and I get that thing going because I want to do hunting. Um, probably just gonna do that chill. I'm a pretty chill back dude. I don't really do too much. I just like to hang out with boys. You know what I mean? Uh, do outdoorsy stuff. Like I said, I got I got dirt bike riding a lot, I like camping, exploring, shit like that. I just got my fishing license, so I'm gonna go do some fishing and shit. Awesome. Um, just you know what I mean? Just chill right laid back i like to play video games i smoke a lot of weed you know what i mean i just i'm just a normal dude outside yeah, of fighting you, you know you twitch a little or is yeah it yeah i stream on twitch yeah, yeah i stream on like twitch that, right? i play video yeah. games on twitch so yeah okay. so when i play games i do that which is pretty cool because it's like i get to hang out with fans right people who don't normally uh i get to talk to like throughout the day that's kind of like my little interaction with fans uh, I make a little bit of money off that too you know what i mean and get to have fun while i'm playing games right and then i get and then because i love video games and i play video games with other that's people why too, i enjoy so. this so much dude because i get to hang out with people yeah it's not like i'm trying to kill it like this is why i love fighting so much yeah. right like when when i joined fighting i was like oh cool i'm gonna make fucking stacks of money which i didn't at first right i didn't make dog shit but i i mainly got into fighting because i loved it i love fighting but then i didn't realize like the people that i've met and the things that i've gotten to do because of fighting like I've had a really extraordinary life, honestly. And shit, if, if fighting wasn't in my life, I'd I would like I would just I don't want to say I'd be a nobody, but you wouldn't even know who I was. You know what I mean? Like I would right. just be I would be like just a normal everyday person. We'd just be two dudes. Yeah, just be two dudes, yeah. which which I am, right? But I just have an extraordinary skill set for beating people up. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Wait, what is your walkout music? I'm trying to re recall. Uh, Highway to Hell. Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah I knew AC, it was DC. something like that, and I fucking love. I love I'm that such song. A that song rocker, gets me dude. Going. Yeah, same. We uh, we actually just upgraded or just meddled up the uh, the intro song because we oh, just did, you? did 100 now. episodes. Oh shit! Congrats, nice. Yeah, so it's you're right there. You're 101. Oh, let's go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's dope. But uh, yeah, uh, buddy of mine. Actually, we've had him on the podcast several times. Incredible musician, metal dude. He wrote, choreographed the whole. You want to listen to a little bit of it? Yeah, actually, I kind of for do. a second. Yeah, let me hear it's, it. It's dope, man. But shout out to Justin Freeman for hooking us up because I called him up and I was like, look, the show when I first started it, I picked this song. I bought the rights to it. It was very like sports scenery, like kind of like a, you know, catchy. Like, like, yeah. yeah. And catchy I was like, jingle. oh, that sounds kind of cool. But I never really even liked it then. <laughs> <laughs> so I was it's like, this is what I want to do. I want to fuck with people's mind. I want the intro to be exactly the same, like leading into it. And then we're going straight Pantera, dude. Or oh, like, you okay, know, like okay. Somewhere down that line of uh, like metal. Cemetery Gates. I'll start off on yeah. nice and slow. Let and me chill see. And I don't know if world. this will play <laughs> on here, but we'll just play a little bit of it. And it plays at the beginning and the end. But I wanted you to hear it. Yeah, I'm uh, a big metalhead. I love metal, yeah. rock and roll. Yeah, that's my shit. I yeah, love rap too, but to I'm not into the skinny perfect Jane song to come into, man. Like, yeah, it really is. I used to come out to Slipknot, Pulse of the Maggots. Okay, that's right too. Like I, that's. Because I like that war siren and what the song's about, And that's right? important to me as a fight fan to, like, you know, when somebody's walking out to Sting or something, I'm like, come on, bro. <laughs> or <laughs> fucking Guida fucking coming out to moment, something in the air and shit, some Phil moment. Collins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit. Or he comes out to, so like, some, he comes out to, like, some. Uh, yeah, let's see if this plays some here. Some, like, Seattle, some Seattle grunge shit, and he's, like, 
head banging like it's like Pantera. It's so funny. All right, you ready? Here we go. Yeah. This sounds familiar. That riff sounds familiar. Yeah. It's it's mine though, you know. That sounds pretty tight so far. I like it. <laughs> it's only a minute and a half though, or so, just because it's it's just. Oh, is it just that repeated? Yeah, okay, just, that's pretty tight. Uh, I like yeah, that. No, he did, he's if you listen to the end of the podcast, you can listen to the entire song. But but that's dope because you could that could be like your background. Yeah, no, it is. Like I lead into noise. the show with yeah. it, you know, it's like, hey, you know, I do a little pre recorded intro where we talk about you know, what we talked about and then it kind of leads into the show. So, so something funny that I was gonna do is similar to that is uh, so I was thinking of my Twitch channel, I wanna do like a little intro too, because I've been watching other streamers and trying to like pick their shit, see what they do to like, you know what I mean, make the stream look cool and whatnot. Right. And so I was like, Okay, I'm gonna have one of my fights and so I wanted to, what I want to do is I want to have my song, How to Hell, playing. And I wanted that to be like the beginning or the end of, you know, my stream, whatever. And then I wanted to have like one of my fights. And then it turns out that my fight of Damian Brown, where I knocked him out, it's like exactly almost the time of the song, How to Hell. So I'm making a video now of the song, How to Hell, with that fight that I'm going to use as like oh, an intro, ex extra thing. Yeah. Intro, outro, intro, outro. I wonder, have any fighters ever done a custom song like like we had this written, like Justin wrote this, wrote yeah, this yeah. for me specifically. I don't, I don't remember who it was, but someone used to always have a custom song every time. It was, like uh, song it was an older guy, up. yeah. It was like a long time when we used to like have our own sponsors like right. that that long ago. Uh, I don't remember who it was though, but he used it used to be like mixtures of songs. Like he would have a DJ like, uh, what's that fucker's name? Like Dead Mouse or someone like oh, that making right, songs. Right, right. I don't yeah. remember who it was though. I'm starting to come back to Someone me. used to do that though, I remember that. But yeah, I, yeah. So I used to come out the Pulse of the Maggots, and then I remember uh, that song was for me, right? Because the war siren in the beginning yeah. and whatnot. And then uh, I noticed I'd walk through the crowd, and I'd be jacked up, and I'd, the crowd would be looking around like, what the fuck is this? playing? What the, <laughs> f what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, because if you're not a metalhead or yeah. into that, it's the They're like waiting for someone to start burning world, cats right? and yeah, shit, yeah, you yeah. know? <laughs> like some, some pentagons are going to start showing up on the walls, you know? Right. And so I was like, damn, I need to do something to uh, like kind of get the crowd involved. Something that's also oh, me. That opening you know I mean? lick. And yeah, that yeah, that that riff in the beginning and then the way it starts is just so perfect. And it, it makes my fucking adrenaline go. Honestly, I dump yeah. right there. I'm just like, oh, have you ever uh, I saw this concert live because I had a bunch of friends that were on it uh, on the lighting crew and it was A C D C oh. and it must have been about two thousand and six, maybe. Um, Damn, I but look up, it, dude, they had a train in the background. Jeremy, can you look this up real quick? I think it's Highway to Hell. Just type in ACDC Highway to Hell live in YouTube or something. Vince, why he's looking that up. Let's wrap this up, buddy, man. Okay, this okay, has been okay. awesome. Where can people find you on Insta, uh, your websites, your Twitch platform, all that sort of stuff. Let's drop all that. All right, let's go. All my social media is the same. I keep it pretty simple. Uh, I mean, not for you, but mainly for me, because uh, let's be honest, I get punched in the head a lot. And one of these days, it's going <laughs> to affect me eventually. But uh, From Help a Shell is my social media, is all of them. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. Uh, ones that I probably don't even use anymore, right? Like <laughs> all the ones that I made over the years that I don't use. It's all just From Help a Shell. I keep it hey, pretty simple. Hey, Jeremy, sorry, dude. Mute this, because we'll get pulled... Uh copyright shit. and then uh i also have a website called uh fan arc f-a-n-a-r-c-h.com what's going on there that's where i actually sell my own stuff so i sell my hats shirts uh I oh, sell the from cases. hell ones right yeah so that Sweet. logo my hat that i have i sell that logo i still sell some old logos too old shirts and whatnot i'm actually gonna make a new shirt design i think i'm gonna have a mustache design going pretty soon here yeah uh maybe some sort of like cowboy-esque uh, you know feel to it something like that maybe some wider type Tombstone, shit. Yeah. yeah maybe something like that or maybe even like bronson okay. because uh, that's what i was gonna tell you too is bronson was also a big part of it so not charles bronson the old school actor but yeah, yeah, yeah. the new Char charlie bronson with um, uh tom hardy that movie uh -huh. that actually because i his mustache and i was like damn that's hard yeah as no fuck, dude. resemblance yeah yeah a and i was bit, like i can yeah. grow a dirty stash like that too i think because yeah. <laughs> like my dad my pops can grow a stash like that so i was like damn i bet i could too <laughs> fuck yeah that's awesome but yeah it's pretty simple all that you know 
All right, man. From Helper Show. Dude, this has been a lot of fun, man. Let's yeah, do this blast. again. I, I really dude. appreciate you coming up and dealing with me and scheduling. Yeah, I, and oh, fucking, I'd love, I'd love to I felt like guy. I was bugging the shit out of you. I was like, fuck. Nah, but we got to get Vince in here. Shit, we'll do whatever you want, man. Yeah, here. We'll let's go, do it again, man. We'll do man. outside stream, doing something outdoorsy. I don't care, dude. Whatever you yeah, want to do. Yeah, we'll get you out. We'll, let's go shoot bows or whatever yeah, you want to do, man. I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. I'm down. Cool. Let's thanks, man. <laughs> Jeremy, you good over there? Yeah, buddy. All right. Thanks, yeah. everybody, for listening. We'll catch you on the next one. That was awesome. Fuck yeah. And uh, that's why I love this shit. Thanks for listening to the Mountainside Podcast. If you haven't had a chance to do this already, please take a moment, follow, like, subscribe, or rate on whatever platform you catch the Mountainside Podcast at. Also, if you'd like some more information on upcoming episodes, safety tips, access to all of our affiliates, and all the badass discounts that we get here at the Mountainside Podcast, check out themountainsidepodcast.com.